back to the channel i'm mode ij this is a sad sad sunday i was just clowning people on friday <sighs> this is the shy episode six the live after show discussion breakdown recap whatever you want to call it i just don't have that energy today y'all my god darn panthers lost today another devastating l that we received oh god my nephew was on me he didn't tore my collar up it's all hanging off my neck now man when i tell you we didn't did it again put a won't they do it in the chat won't they lose again golly it's supposed to be the lord's day mo's day and the panther's day but instead it's the lord's day Panthers catch an L. Mo got to talk about the mother effing shy. I've been on that hen dog since about noon. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button, man. I, I, I really don't even know. One thing I will say about the shy, the acting is great. I fuck with Dre and the acting is great. Everyone's doing a hell of a job on acting. We're going to jump into this. Give me, give me a second to gather my thoughts. Hit that like button when you come on in here. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. This is the shy after show. I'm episode six. No, I'm Mo. Wait, this is episode six. I got you, Kendall. Like, who am I kidding, man? My name is Moe Dodger J, man. And this is, this, this, this is the after show, man. I don't give a damn. My team lost. Who gives a damn? We lost. We lost. But at the end of the day, it was a moral victory, y'all. Guess what? We get up. We live. We live to play another Sunday. I'm Moe Dodger J. This is the after show for episode six of The Shy. Now, I will tell you this. I give this episode like a six, maybe a seven if I really jump into it and break it down. I literally watched it right after the Panthers lost. I said, man, I'm going to go ahead. And watch this motherfucking shot. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was gonna say let's do a Tubi movie tonight, but 
I can't let y'all down. And that's one thing I just can't do is let y'all down. I already feel like I don't do enough for y'all and I got to go harder. You know what I mean? That ain't a pause because I really mean it. But this is the shy episode six. There was a lot of shit going on right now. And I put up a question. Should Victor or Trig tell the FBI the truth? And the reason I broke them apart, because Victor, councilman, Trigger, nigga man. You see what I'm saying? There's two different, but there's a difference between the two. Councilman, nigga man. Councilman, nigga man. Well, y'all know over here, when it comes to these TV shows in real life, I want y'all to get on that phone and call 9-1. Don't forget that one. Call them. But on these TV shows, we have strict guidelines. Gonna, gonna, gonna. I'm gonna tell we don't do that over here. So maybe, maybe I'm just saying, if you're reformed, if you're if you've changed who you are, are you allowed as Councilman Victor? Are you allowed to tell the truth to the FBI? Because I mean, you work with the state, they are feds. Now I can see you talking to maybe like the state police because those are your people, but can you go talk to the feds? Can you go talk to the fans? That's what I want to know, man. We're going to make this episode interesting. I tell you that. I tell you that. Because there was a lot of disturbing moments. I said, man, that wouldn't happen. Kev. Kev, you graduated. Kev is the only person on the show that actually has a light at the end of the tunnel. But he's going to have to get up out of the city. And the only way he's going to get up out of the city is if he takes that damn deal. Now, This is going to be like a recap slash me telling you the story behind the story because I just didn't get enough time to do the recap because I was watching my Panthers lose and 2K came out. I had to get the new controller. You know what I'm saying? I had to to get a new controller. Every year I buy one controller. This year we got the Carolina Blue. Last year I had a red one. Of course, you know, I got a white one every year also. So I buy a colored controller and I buy a white controller every year. I don't know why I just do. But yeah, this is my new one. And it may have been bad luck because uh, I bought this Thursday and we lost on Sunday. Oh, well. Let's go ahead and jump into this. Now, I don't know if you guys remember or not, but there was an instance where they moved into a big house. They moved into a big house. Now, out of the three properties that I have, the biggest house that I have, it ain't even... It's only one room upstairs. So, yeah, you go upstairs in one room. Yeah, that's probably the the, the biggest house I got. But over here, they got like a five-bedroom. Five-bedroom. When I hear five-bedrooms, I just automatically assume, man, they rich, rich. They living in the mansion. When I hear five-bedrooms, I say, oh, they got some money over there. Five-bedrooms. Even when we moved to the suburbs my junior year of high school, we only had four bedrooms. We only had four bedrooms. So I said, like, a five-bedroom house? Oh, you got to have some money in the pocket, some pesos, some yen, some guap. You know what I mean? Some money, some moolah. So it only makes sense that this much moolah is in the house, baby. She going to say, whose money is this, Emmett? You know it ain't Smokey's money. You know this house was bought because of Duda. You know that car for the ex-wife baby mama was from Duda. You know everything is tied to Duda in this house, right? You remember the guy that showed up to our housewarming, which was really his housewarming? Duda, baby, what do you mean? What do you mean, baby? Emmett, whose money is this? Emmett's like, oh, wait a minute, baby. Wait a minute. Wait a minute now. Don't even do that, man. You that, that, that do this money. I'm just holding the money. She said, but for how long? I don't know, man. They said they're going to get it. It's going to be a short time. Now she's upset because she said, Emmett, you done brought dirty money into the house. I said, oh, she got a point, Emmett. She got a point. Keisha been annoying this season, but Keisha got a point, Emmett. You bringing dirty money into the crib. If people know that dude and then put the money over here, I don't know about y'all, but everybody in Chicago ain't scared of Duda. I'm just going to be real. It's just the niggas in this fucking 
five block radius that they scared a dude. No one else in Chicago, we've heard any, we haven't heard any gang members saying they scared. We haven't heard any of the rival territories, the cartel, or anybody saying they scared a dude. No one in the city of Chicago, outside of the characters that live in these five blocks, are scared of Duda. Nobody. None. So, if niggas wanted to come and rob, this is like a stash house. This is no different than where Lulu and Marvin were at. This is just, hey, as soon as the dope come in, the money go out. You got to put the money somewhere else. You remember Raquel Thomas, she had a little spot, right? Juliana, she got robbed, right? You see what I mean? Just because there ain't no dope there, people going to find out where that money is, and you putting the whole family in jeopardy, Emmett. And I thought, and I thought these two were going to be hitting it off this season and they were going to be on the right path. That's why I tell y'all, when I watched this episode, I said I failed y'all. I dropped the ball this season. Pause. I fumbled. I fumbled, man. I was telling y'all I was hyped for the shot coming back on. I said, ooh, let me do these predictions for the season. I think I got something. I was wrong. I did not expect Emmett to be fucking up every single episode. I said... Emmy going to get on a good foot because once upon a time we heard this, and I think y'all know this. And if you don't know it and you're new to the channel, with the Lord and a good woman, he shall find his way. Now, Emmett got a good woman, but Emmett ain't found the Lord. Emmett is worshiping the devil, and the devil is Duda. That's why we can't get right. See, if I would have known that, if they would have said, Mo, listen, dude is coming back season six. What do you think? Then I could have probably said, oh, the devil's back in town. But I didn't know that. So I thought Emmett and Keisha was about to be kicking it. I didn't know that this nigga Emmett was going to be tricking off. See, that's why you see a lot of people. A lot of people. When you watch, uh, well, not when you watch. But when you think about all the lottery winners, like 70 to 80 percent of them go broke. Why? Because just like Emmett, when you ain't never had nothing, when you get a little bit of money in your pocket, niggas get reckless. Now we just spending. You shouldn't be spending none of this. Yeah, I know everybody say, Mo, I'm taking my money up front. There ain't no guarantee I live to see 29 years. There ain't no guarantee you're going to make it down there to cash the goddamn check, nigga. But listen. Take the 29 years, at least for 29 years, you know that you have a check coming in at the beginning of the year. Also, your family can reap those benefits. Now, if you take this large lump sum, then that's going to get all locked up and everything. But that's neither here nor there. Right now, we're talking about people that get a lot of money in their pocket at one time, and they don't know what to do with it. Just like when we got the stimulus, everybody said, Mo, man, Trump in office, he putting money in our pocket. They blew that $1,200. Now all they can do is reminisce on the good times. It's just the way life is. You got to learn how to conserve your dollars. But. As Trench Gaming said, we should have never gave you niggas money because now he didn't got a whole bankroll up in the living room. He got a house because of the dirty money. He got a car because of the dirty money. Oh, he tricked off a car. Y'all forgot Emmett bought himself a car also. Emmett bought himself a car. He tricked off a car, got a house. And now he's holding, let's just say, a hundred, two. Man, let me go back. Let me weigh this bag. Did Keisha pick this bag up with one hand or two hands? Because if it's a one hand, it's up under 150. But if it was a two hand, that means we sitting at at least a quarter to 300 thou out. Woo-wee! Because you could pick that one up. I used to curl 100. I used to curl 120 thou. You know, I used to curl 120. Man, I had a two video. I had a two hand pause all of that was a pause but we talking about money see so you can't pause it because when the money keep flowing you want it to keep going it ain't no pausing when you're talking about money that's how it is at my channel y'all can go take that to y'all channel but this about 200 let's just say 200 well let me let uh, i can't do that I, it wouldn't do me any justice to a lot of y'all 10 20 30 40 50 60 oh shit it's about a half a ticket in here because this right here is almost 100000 Oh, my goodness. We are dealing with big money here. Big money. I like it. Big bucks, no women. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. These are $100,000 stacks. 100, 200, 300. 
400. We can see 400 right here at the top. We can see 500 right at the top. We ain't even made it into the show a minute, and we are already talking about $500,000. Now, follow me, y'all. Follow me. Follow me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Hey, man. Rock rock with your boy. Rock with your boy. Just, just, just hear me out. Just hear me out. Y'all listening? Y'all listening. Put a one in the chat if you're listening right now. Cause I got a I got a few questions. I I, I got I got a few questions. I, 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 I could be wrong. Most of the time I am wrong. But the reason I had the pocket watch Kindles because I'm trying to figure out the timeline. We found a hundred thousand. Let we we found five hundred thousand dollars today. Correct. Five hundred thousand dollars. Episode six. Correct. Okay. It is now graduation. It's graduation this week. In this episode, the next day is graduation. They take the school pictures today. The next day is graduation. Last week it was prom. The week before that, wait, this is six, five was the prom before it was episode three when Emmett got the money at the door. So he just been holding $500,000 in the ottoman and no one's ever seen this in the two to three month span. Term is flying in the shy. Remember Emmett, not Emmett, Kevin, he said, He's moving to L.A. He got the information a week ago. That was during the prom. So for a whole week, this money just been sitting in the ottoman. But we know that it's been longer than the ottoman because they had prom in between prom and taking your. I don't even know why they're taking class photos at the end of the school year. You take those at the beginning. You just put on a generic cap and gown. Y'all take the picture so it can go in the yearbook. They ain't putting that shit. Well, they could probably do that shit in the yearbook nowadays real quick. They could probably have that shit put in like the next day. Everything digital. Back in the day, you had to mail that shit in. But okay, yeah, okay. But it's still at least a month in between time. Keisha been fired for a while. Keisha has been fired for at least a week. Prom was last week when she got fired. Graduation is this week. So for one week, she just ain't cleaned up or did nothing. You see what I'm saying? Like, she just now finding this money. Yeah, my prom and uh, graduation was like a week and a half apart. But I'm saying, between then and um, in graduation, that's a week she didn't do nothing. But remember, Emmett got the money at the end of episode three. What the hell been going on? Keisha ain't got no job. She should be happy that there's $500,000 in the motherfucking ottoman. Shit, I wish I would come home and I ain't got no job. And I'm like, damn. Hey, babe. Hey, what's this 500 over here? What's the 500 for what? Like, you in some shit? What's going on? Well, that's our shit. But by the time, I ain't gonna lie to y'all, man. In the TV world, if they made me a character, and this was me and Keisha, but say it was Keisha's bag of money, and it was $500,000 in there, by the time Keisha came home, it'd be like $50 left. Cause I'm gone. <laughs> Cause I'm gone. I'm doing just like peaches minus the drugs doing just like peaches minus the drug. I'm taking the bag. Oh, this is good leather too. What is, Oh, this is crocodile. My bad. I apologize. It's that gator. Oh yeah. I'm taking that 500. I'm gone. <laughs> I'm gone. Man, Keisha ain't battling no damn depression. She battling broke. Ain't got no job. That's what she battling. You can call that depression, but we know in life is called life. <laughs> you ain't got no job. You can't pay your bills. That's called life. <laughs> That's why they had the song. What would you do if your son was at home crying all alone on the bedroom floor because he's hungry and the only way to feed him is to sleep with a man for a little bit of money? Well, her, this is, you know what I'm saying, Ronnie was... His dad different, so we can't say his dad is gone somewhere smoking crack now, in and out of lockdown. For y'all, just just another day, but to her, that's what she called life. 
She's battling not having a job. I remember when that happened. May of 2009, I got laid off. And I understood that, oh, my God, if I don't get up off my ass and stop being depressed, then shit. I'm going to be on my ass on the corner somewhere. So what did I do? La, 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 la. Wait till I get my body right. Oh, I had a dream I could find my way to heaven. But instead, I spent it on nothing. I had to save all the pennies I had, y'all. Man, it was down and out. So what did I do? I moved down to Georgia. <laughs> I got up on my grizzly. And then I joined the military. But hey, man. Keisha's battling not having a job, man. It's one of the worst feelings ever. It's one of the worst feelings ever. Now look at Emmett. He upset. Now what does he do? Act more stupidly. And he tells her he's going to handle it. What up, 313? What up, Smooth? Look at Emmett, man. Now, the bad part about them is they can't just up and leave. You know what I mean? They can't just hop up and get the hell up out the city. They got family here. Emmett got seven kids. Keisha, her family, they're going to be upset. You already know that Nina be acting a damn fool when she finds out her babies are leaving. Y'all think Emma's going to figure it out, man? And what, once again, can y'all remind me, how old are they supposed to be? Like 22, 23? And I'm just thinking about it. Why Emmett got to have all these damn kids that he don't take care of? <laughs> We don't never see none of the other kids. Damn, Emmett. You just got drama everywhere. Your baby mama getting the car broken into. Keisha mad y'all getting money. She ain't got no job. EJ can't read. We don't know what little Ronnie is doing. Your other baby mamas, they they cool. I mean, we don't see them much. That's good. We don't got to hear from them because they be on Emmett's head. Y'all remember when Emmett was doing the wedding? <laughs> and he catered the wedding? <laughs> Baby mama was talking bad to that nigga, man. Boy, I tell you, that's one thing. That's one thing, man. I hope I don't ever have a baby mama because they were talking bad to Emmett. And they just always assume that us light-skinned brothers act the same. But see, I'm way older than Emmett, though. Emmett, damn. Damn. Emmett, I don't know what to say. But anyway, fuck all that. Now we get into where it gets interesting because everything is tied to none other than Mr. Duda. Gonna, 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 I'm gonna tell. Nina has empty nest syndrome. I heard of that. I heard of that. We're gonna, we gonna talk about that, you know. It's just, I mean, she want her babies around. That's all she knows. That's all she knows. But the FBI shows up. And the FBI, they ain't playing around. Remember, I, I mean, well, I don't remember. But I remember. So, The end of episode five, he left with the feds. That's oh yeah, that's what Fatima was saying. Does it have to be this time of the day, man? It's the feds. Just go with the feds, man. Just 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 do what they say, man. Because if they knocking, they know something. They know more than what you know. See, the feds show up once they know. The feds are like us watching the episode and knowing what's going to happen in the future. That's what the feds are. Now, if you're looking at like the the Justice League, the Super Troopers, like them, no, nah, they don't give a damn. The police just show up and do what the police do. But the feds, when they come a knocking, <laughs> they just one step away from a warrant, from a federal indictment. But he shows up and he's talking to Victor. Yeah, this is Victor Taylor right now. This is not Trigger Man. This is Victor Taylor. He got the suit and tie on. As long as I got my suit and tie. And then he got his boy Quentin over here. I think that was his name, Quentin. But he's like, what can I What, what, what can I do for y'all? He said, why was you with... Uh, uh, <laughs> Why was you with uh brother Duda? He said, I I mean, I wasn't nowhere near him, man. You know me, I'm counseling me. I, I wouldn't do nothing like that. He said, That sounds kind of fishy because we seen a diamond in the back with the sunroof top. Leaning in the with a gangster lean. Yeah. 
Well, we see you in the vehicle leaving from the area, the vicinity of a 1Q. He said, huh? He said, I wasn't with him. I wasn't with him. And that's the thing about the feds, man. That uh, that right there is some scary stuff because they really watching everything you do. And at that moment, once they have this, you just got to assume that your phone's tapped. You just got to go ahead and assume that they got a warrant out for something so they can do extensive spying on you. Or they will call it gathering intelligence. <laughs> yeah, they getting a lot of information on you. And who took this picture? Right in front of them. Wow, portrait. Right in front. Who took this picture? They moving reckless if they got you in. They got you in HD, full high definition, leaving the crumb scene. He said, I don't know nothing. He said, you ain't got to know nothing, but you're going to tell me something. Gonna, gonna, gonna. I'm going to tell. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? You, You may not know nothing. But see, when you talk to the Fed, you're going to tell something. You may not know nothing, but you're going to tell me something. You're going to tell me something. Now, you remember in Minutes to Society, when he said, you know, you fucked up, right? Guess what? Nothing ever happened. Nothing ever happened to him because that's the police. The police ain't figuring shit out. But the Fed's a little bit different. When you fuck up with the Fed, you're going ahead and facing at least five. Doing three and a quarter. <laughs> They got a picture of him. Look at directly at him, too. I don't even remember where they dropped his body off at, man. If I could, I would. I'd go back and see. Because we need to see what this environment looked like and see if we can peep anywhere that the laws may have been. Can anyone tell me the episode this was? Off the top of their head. Do you remember what episode this was? Because I want to go back and watch this scene again. I want to see where they could have potentially hid at. Under a subway. Yeah, I, I, damn. See, I want to see what was around there. Because I want to see, was it, was the feds doing their job? Like, they were incognito? Or did, like, if it's like a building right next to where they were doing it and it's daylight, then we got to put this on these two fools. Plus, the feds were already following Duda. You see what I'm saying? The feds already watched the episode. They know what's coming up. They were trailing Duda for a reason, and they even found out about a body. They didn't just pop up this day. The feds, they different. They just been watching and waiting and waiting and waiting. Hopefully, you mess up and do something for the state so they don't have to waste any of their funds to go out there and get your ass. Let the state lock you up, and then we'll just come and get you from the state. That's typically what they want to do right there. Now, the feds, they got, like the FBI, they got a lot of pride. Now, they want to bring down whoever they can bring down on their own. They don't want it to be no joint, none of that. No, they take pride in their work over there. What up, Kyle? Right now, we just talking about how goddamn Duda, and this is Trig. This ain't Victor. This is Duda and Trig. Fuck it up. Pardon my language, officer, but I just had to say it one time. You know what I mean? This is when it gets real once the feds pull up. Yeah, with the camera that they're using, they could have been blocks away. I'm just wanting to see if there's like anything in the surrounding areas. You know how I am. Because now I kind of want to see, okay, they could have been, no, they couldn't have been. That vantage point is direct. It couldn't be from up above. Pause. <laughs> okay. We're going to figure that out. We're going to figure that out. But the feds, they looking at them, look at them, look at that face. Whenever someone talks to you and they're sitting straight, but they turn this way a little bit. Yeah, you see, they turn the body a little bit over the shoulder. Kind of like Uncle Rico. You remember? And <laughs> <laughs> hey, you remember on Napoleon Dynamite shit, like, hey, Uncle Rico, you going to take that picture for his badge? The nigga turned sideways. She said, put your hand up under your chin. She said, lower the chin a little bit. She said, look to the left. That <laughs> nigga Uncle Rico. Man, damn, I got to watch Napoleon Dynamite tonight. That nigga Uncle Rico was in there talking about. <laughs> damn, this nigga got all the answers already. All I need you to do is A, either confirm what I know, or B, you going down, you going to jail for it. 
And even if you confirm what I know, you still going to jail. He got my dog trig, man. This ain't even Victor no more. He didn't got Victor so far in the blender, as my dog Brillo would say. This nigga Victor dropped his regular name. He went back to Trig because in his mind, he's thinking, I can't say nothing because he's scared of Duda. And, you know, they got a policy out there. And that policy is. Gonna, gonna, gonna. I'm gonna tell. Damn. They tried to get Trig up out of here. But he already know what he know. What up, Tamika? Miss Cheryl, what's going on? Play for Keys, what's up, man? What's up? Make sure y'all hit that like button. Right now, we talking about, is this Victor, is this Trig at the moment? Is it Victor or is it Trig at the moment? The way he's talking and sitting is very, very professional. Oh, boy, that be on uh, MSNBC. He a lawyer. I think, was he a lawyer? Yeah, he was a lawyer. Now he's just on there. That hey, that brother on there, this white guy, but you know, that brother on there, he good. He hey, I like damn, this motherfucker know what he's talking about, too. I don't even think he'd be reading the teleprompter. He'd be up there speaking just fluently. I'm like, okay, let me hear something. What you talking about? <laughs> let me hear you something. Now, Emmett run all the way over to Pop's house. Dad, I need that good. I need that good. I don't know if y'all seen that little, um, I don't know if it was real or the kids were recording, like playing around, but it was a little chunky kid. He had got beat up. <laughs> he had got beat up and he told his little brother, go get the gun, run. Let me try to find that real quick, man. I'm going to tell y'all the story, but let me try to find that. <laughs> But he over here talking to Pops. Pops, I need that gun. He said, Dad, I need that gun. You said if I ever needed it, go get the gun from you. Darnell's like, what do you need that gun for? What do you need the gun for? He said, man, I just need it. I just need it, Dad. You don't even understand. Please let me get that gun. So he goes and go gets the Thule for him. He bring it out like it's a prized possession here. Darnell's walking this motherfucker out. Like he about to give him a girl, <laughs> give him a gift, a goddamn birthday present. He walks out with two hands. He looks his son in the eye. He says, son, you think you a man with that gun? Emmy looks his dad in the eye. He said, I'm a man without it. I said, what? For real? This is what we doing? But then it made me realize, like, Emmy's is scared. He's just an innocent kid. We all looking at Keisha talking about Keisha's suffering from depression, y'all. M is depressed out here too. How do you how do you think how do you think Emmett is? All of this weighing on his head. We're all cutting Keisha some slack. This nigga works a full-time job. He deals with Duda. He got four kids that he got to feed. He got a grown woman with no job he got to feed. We're talking about depression. He's resorting to going and getting the gun, and he got to have a ticket at the house. He's going to get a gun. Depression. Oh, no. This is worse than depression. My young man is mentally ill. He's unstable, Darnell. Don't give him that gun. Please don't give him that gun. Darnell, please. So if you got a heart, Darnell, if you want to be a real father, do not give your son that gun. Do not. Furious did not give Trey the gun. Furious did not give Trey the gun. Pops did not give Craig the gun. Do not give your son the gun. Darnell, please. Don't give your son the gun. Mufasa didn't give Simba the gun. He told him to stay away from the elephant graveyard. Don't give your son the gun, Darnell. Don't. Uh, I said no. No. No, don't give him the gun, Darnell. Just don't do it. If you have a heart, and you fuck with my dog Prillo the big review, then make sure you subscribe to his channel. But don't give the boy the gun. Don't give the boy the gun. 
This is your son, Darnell. You said you got to protect him. You ain't protecting Darnell. He ain't built like that. You looked him in the eye and told him he wasn't built like that. He ain't ready for this. I'm not even built like that, Tommy. That ain't even me, yo. <laughs> Why? Why is it in our community the dad gives the boy the gun? Why? Why? <laughs> Stanley Johnson, Papa's dad, didn't give him the gun. <laughs> yeah, Rock gave Kane in the gun, and look how that nigga Kane and turned out. <laughs> Rock gave Kane in the gun, Brillo, and look how that nigga Kane and turned out. Man, he's a fucking menace. <laughs> He's a fucking menace to society. Kanan did not belong on the streets for one minute. That's one time they let somebody out. You like, nah, nah this nigga don't deserve no second chance. This nigga Kanan should have stayed in prison, man. Kanan was different. But Kanan, Kanan didn't give Sean the gun. Jamie didn't give Tariq the gun. Don't. Give the boy the gun. That's all I'm preaching. But Darnell being God darn Darnell. God darn it, he done done it again. Darnell, that's his name. God darn it, Darnell done done it again. He done gave the boy the gun. He done gave the boy the gun. Mm -hmm. I'll never understand it. Darnell really thought he was doing something. He was like, yeah, I'm a good dad today, man. You know what I mean? Took the gun from my son. Yeah, I'm going to give it right back to him. What? Don't give the boy the gun. <laughs> Don't give the boy the gun. Shout out to my dog, Brillo, but real for real. Make sure you subscribe to my dog, Brillo, the Big Review channel. That's my brother, man. You know, we go at it. We the only one that can talk shit to each other like that, man. Fuck Rock Hill. But... <laughs> Now, shout out to my dog, Brillo, though, for real, for real. He gives Emmett the gun back. I'm like, oh, here we go. Emmett about to go do some sliding. All right, bet. First thing this nigga do is go to the room and get the practices. Nigga, what? You go to the room to practice? I said, Emmett, what you, hey, man. Hey, hey, bro. I can't even call you, bro, man. This is some brother. Hey, brother. Listen up, man. You ain't ready for this, bro. No, you're not ready for this, man. You don't even know that. If you pull that Thule, you got to use that Thule. You can't pull it and not use it. That's why they say don't never point that thing at something unless you're going to shoot it. Don't never point that thing. At... I'm just saying that's what they say. That's what they say. I don't know. I ain't no shooter like that. I don't know. I just don't, don't point that thing unless you're going to use that thing. That's all I'm saying. Well, sometimes you got to get in that mirror. His, <laughs> his palms are sweaty. <laughs> he over here. Like, damn, boy, straighten up. You're shaking like a stripper over there. <laughs> then the hand like, <laughs> boy, you give him a quarter and a scratcher ticket. He get that whole thing done. That motherfucker get the yee, yee. Like, damn. Damn, this nigga Emmett just scratched off 45 scratcher tickets in 38 seconds. Like, who is this guy? Who is this gentleman? <laughs> hey, man, you know that's a world record. A world record, yeah, in the Guinness World Book, I think the record was 37 scratcher tickets in under a minute. Hell, at that rate, you could probably make it and beat the record probably by 10. Damn, okay, Emmett. Okay, Emmett. You doing your thing, Emmett. <laughs> All right, y'all, if you don't hit the like button. Like, damn, Emmett. Is it loaded, Emmett? If it's loaded, you need to get your hand off that trigger, nigga. <laughs> Emmett, what you doing, man? It, it can't be loaded. It can't be loaded. Come on, man. It can't be loaded. Little Wayne told me trigger like a hairpin. Trigger like a hairpin. No, nah, not this gun. This, this, it can't be loaded. Ain't no way. Emmett about to shoot a hole in this goddamn mirror. I ain't scared of you, man. You ain't gonna punk me, man. You ain't gonna punk me, man. Push a goddamn button. Push a goddamn button. 
Yeah, Emmett. Emmett's really into it now. Now, I'm joking around, but right now he's supposed to be focused. He's supposed to be dead serious because when you get there, they always say practice how you're going to play. Well, unless he pulls this trigger in practice, he ain't going to pull that trigger when he's in the game. That's facts. That's facts. As an NBA legend, Patrick Ewan said, what is that shot? You ever took that shot? You ever practiced that shot before Emmett? He ain't did no practicing. The most he did was get in the mirror and tough talk his reflection. But we already know his reflection is a reflection of him and both them niggas weak. Neither one of them niggas is built like that. I'm not even built like that, Tommy. That, that ain't, ain't even, even Emmett, yo. <laughs> that ain't even Emmett, yo. We know he ain't like that. He know he ain't like that. And you know he know he ain't like that because he had to get in the mirror to act like he was like that. Because he had to look at himself and realize how foolish he is. Or in the world of Coolio, I take a look at myself and realize there's nothing left. Even my mama think that my mind is gone. Keep standing most of our life, living in the gangsta's paradise. He ain't living in gangsta paradise. He is some gangsta shit. But this ain't the gangsta paradise for him because he old nigga, that old nigga. He got to go get a gun, but he ain't ready to pull the trigger. It's a lot of shit going on. And we're all talking about Keisha's depression. This nigga Emmett, man, he's gone, bro. There's no coming back from this. If I if I was writing this, episode seven, hey, man, they didn't got Emmett, y'all. They didn't got Emmett, y'all. If I was writing this, episode six, they didn't got Emmett, y'all. I ain't going to lie to you. The, the beginning of episode six, they didn't got Emmett. They didn't knocked off Passa. They didn't got Emmett. Oh, yeah. Episode seven. Oh, <laughs> I'm taking, I'm taking shaky hand out. Yeah, that's a shaky hand kid out the game. If I was writing this episode seven, oh, Emmett gone. He ain't built like this. No, no, no. Keisha would be doing so much better. She wouldn't be battling depression if Emmett was gone. I'm just saying. In the TV world, in the TV world, if you remove Emmett from Keisha's life, Keisha won't be suffering from depression. Big facts. So maybe Emmett should have. Pow, pow. Bing, 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 bing. You know what I mean? Do something. He didn't did all this practicing in the mirror. I'm thinking, all right, he about to go slide. Like, it's, it's, it's inevitable right now. We're going to see Emmett do something bad. I said, all right, bad. All right, that's how we're going to do it. That's how we're going to do it, y'all. Now they out here, they taking class photos for the for the yearbook, you know what I mean? Oh, I gotta ask y'all a question. Where did Bakari apologize? Where did Bakari apologize? Well, we gotta get ready for the senior photos. Everybody in the hall, Kev talking about, man, we've been out here all day. What's taking so long? I've never seen a bunch of kids eager to get back to class. Man, on school picture day. On on senior and well, and junior picture day. Wait, I don't have a I don't have a picture in my yearbook from uh senior year. One of the years I didn't I didn't take no picture for the yearbook. But I remember sophomore year. Yeah, we took our picture, man. Dipped out, man. What are you talking about? Going back to class after taking the picture, man? It's picture day. That should be the only thing we do on picture day is take picture. Come to your school, take your picture, go back to the crib. You know what I mean? I ain't go back to my crib. My house is a little too far to walk to, but you know, I went to a crib. <laughs> we got everyone out here. Jake just like me. He on his phone. But only back then, man, I didn't have a phone in school. I had one my senior year, but all you could do is just text. But you had to press all the numbers. I was a G. I ain't going to lie to you. Papa talking about he want to look good because, man, this is how we're going to remember Papa for the rest of his life. You know what I mean? Every time we see Papa in any other show, because it kind of brought a tear to my I ain't going to lie to you. Man, we watch these kids grow up, man. We watch these kids grow up, and we got a little bond with them. Kind of like, you know what I'm saying? We just a friend of the family. You know what I mean? They, we watched them all grow up from little bitty kids. These niggas are like 20 years old. It's just crazy. But this is how we're going to always remember them. 
we're never going to think of Papa of whoever his new character is. We're going to always call him Papa. It sucks, but that's what it is. This is his character. This is who you are. Not in real life, but on the TV screen, you're going to always be Papa to us. Always be Papa. In 20 years, there you go, Kendall. Yeah, 515. In 20 years, that was a good one. That was an easy one, but that was a good one. In 20 years, we can be like, hey, man, ain't that Papa from the shy? Hey, you remember Papa from the shot? I'm going to be long gone off YouTube by then. It might be something else out there. But, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be on here that long anyway. You know, maybe like another two years, maybe three. It depends, you know what I mean? At some point, I think I'm just going to give up on TV because I don't know the direction that we're headed in. But I know if I ever see Papa on TV in the future, I'm always, hey, man, that was Papa. You know what I'm saying? I'm be telling my, you know what I'm saying? My, my, my nieces and nephew, when they get up, I'm like, man, that was Papa. I used to watch the show. He's a little bitty kid back when he was y'all age. Yeah, a little bitty kid. Now y'all his age. Yeah. Did I know that was him in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle? I ain't even watched Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. I ain't. <laughs> she said, like, Dre and Power. Well, nah, not to me. Uh, what's his name? Rotimi? To me, Rotimi, I, I remember as Rotimi because he came to Arizona. And, you know, I was watching Power, but I went over and I spoke to him. We ain't, we ain't talk long, but he was like, yeah, holla at my manager because this is back when I used to do skits. So I tried to holla at her. I was going to give I had like, I could probably get like, I said probably like 2,500, maybe like five bands, but it wasn't going to be nothing long. I was going to do a skit. And I was like, man, I wanted to have him in it. So he was like, holla at my manager. I went over to holla at the manager, right? And the manager going to say, oh, something, something. He ain't working. Man, I looked at this nigga like, hey, dog, you could have just told me you wasn't doing that, man. You sent me over to your goddamn man. So I know that nigga as Timmy. But it ain't nothing to give. So I'm just saying, we was in the club. I understand. I get it. But I know him as Timmy because I went over there. I tried to get him to do a skit. This is like 2018. 18. It's either 18 or 19 when I was in Arizona. But yeah, I know him as that. I was trying to get him on the skit. You know what I'm saying? Trying to build that working relationship so I could try to, you know what I'm saying, get him on the channel or something. He like holler at my manager. And then his manager, like, oh, something, something, something. But oh, he ain't working right now. I wanted to tell the manager, I know he ain't working right now, nigga. Tomorrow. But we in the club. I like, fuck it. And never tried again. So that's one reason I don't like for me. Y'all be like, hey, reach out to something. Man, I ain't reaching out to nobody, bro. They want to work with me. They want to. They see I'm doing something. All right, cool. Come on, come on, over. come on over. But you know, if not, it is what it is, man. You know, I have a good time just getting on here and talking trash to y'all. So, but shout out to Roti because he he performed one of his songs. The ladies were loving it though. So shout out to him. You know, it ain't no hard feelings with me. You know, it is what it is. I get it. <laughs> but yeah, we gonna always remember Papa as Papa. Dre, I mean, we'll remember Dre as Dre. I'm just saying for me personally, I'll always remember that experience. Because I was almost this close. I can't even show. This close, this close to getting them on the channel. But it didn't work, man. It didn't work. Well, Maisha... This is 20 years after I graduated, girl. Go in there and be fly. She said, this shit come naturally. You know what I mean? When I'm in the mall, it's a photo shoot. You know what I'm saying? When I'm with my dog, it's a photo shoot. Girl, it's a photo shoot. Girl, it's a photo shoot. Damn, young Kev in here, 19 years old, bro. I don't know about y'all, but that's crazy, man. We just watch these kids grow up just like old boy. Everybody hates Chris Tyler. Yeah, watching him like, damn, that's a successful young man. I ain't know what he was gonna do after that because he did a hell of a job. And everybody hates Chris. But I'm glad he's doing good over on Abbott Elementary. Good to see my brother still out here working. Then we got Jake. Come on, Jake, give me a smile. Come on, smile for the camera, man. Come on. This is your smile, Jake. Come on, man. My mom would be upset if I took a picture like this. Man, them school pictures used to cost. Man, they used to charge double the Yola on them damn school pictures. Anyone with kids in school right now? 
Let me know how much school pictures cost right now. That's something I want to know. If anyone has kids in school, let me see something. Come on, answer the phone. Hello. Hey, are you busy? No, I'm waiting on Jealous. Hey, y'all, I got my sister on the live. How much do school pictures cost? They be high. <laughs> like the package <laughs> from last year, let me see. Or you can get a package of like, uh, eight by ten and some four by sixes for like a hundred dollars and some wallets for like a hundred dollars or seventy five dollars. They be high. That that's all you get. You don't get like the remember mom and dad used to buy the whole spread, Pauls. The whole and you send it out to everybody. Man, everybody in the family <laughs> had a copy. Nah, you ain't getting that no more. You getting like one eight by ten, like a, a couple of four by sixes, some five by sevens, and a couple of wallets or something like that. But them but them packages be high. You won't even buy them no more. <laughs> hey, all you need to do is get the picture and you can just make copies. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I ain't want nothing because we talking about senior pictures on here. So I was seeing how much they cost. Man, senior pictures, even more than that, them got to be like $500. <laughs> yep, that's, what Ms. Grip. that's what Miss Cheryl just said, 500 to to 1000 Heck yeah, you coming off a grip of them pictures. Man, ain't no way. But when my kids... <laughs> Hey, my kids getting school, man. I'm gonna take a picture off my damn camera phone, and that's it. You better get some. Uh, what's them one we used to go to? Uh, them uh, JC Penny photos. Hey, in Sears, <laughs> Montgomery Wards. Exactly. <laughs> hey, Montgomery Wards is crazy. It's <laughs> too old school. Hey, be showing your age. Montgomery Wards had an elevator in it, though, so I always thought it was better than Sears. <laughs> I know, right? You did. <laughs> now, nah, but I ain't want nothing. All right. I'll probably be over there tomorrow for Jackson's birthday. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> right. We ain't doing nothing. She got softball practice tomorrow. But anyway, we'll talk later. All right. Love you. All right. Love you too. Bye. Yeah, senior pictures. They said you get like six pictures for a hundred dollars. Six pictures for a hundred dollars, nigga. Hey man, if I come up to the school, like if I see a package, they say I get a uh, eight by ten. Two wallet photos and like the little small three by sixes. If I only get one eight by ten, two of those, it's like three. Hey, for a hundred dollars, I'm fighting the cameraman. I'm fighting the cameraman. If I come up to the school, you tell me I get five pictures for a hundred dollars, man. <laughs> hey, bro. Hey, my kid, you know what? We ain't taking photos this year. No, not for no hundred dollars. We not. Man, I can take a picture right now. I can get on Photoshop right now. I can remove the background and put my own background back there. And that'll be school pictures this year. We took a picture of the baby in the school. Yeah, hey, yo, a hundred dollars. Man, I got other stuff I could spend a hundred dollars on, man. Some school pictures. I know what you looked like last year. I remember. Like, I'm on school pictures. The only time you need school pictures is kindergarten, first grade, fifth grade ninth grade and when you graduate that's the only time you need school photos all them other years man don't nobody learn nothing in the seventh grade don't no one learn nothing in the third and fourth grade you only learn it like the first the second and then the fifth the sixth grade year no one remembers anything from seventh grade eighth grade then you got your freshman year nine and ten you don't you don't remember nothing and those you know what i'm saying your freshman year, sophomore year, you should be remembering shit and retaining from your senior year, but most of us don't, man. A hundred dollars? A hundred dollars on top of the couple of thousand dollars I spent on school lunch? Oh, no. And supplies? No. A hundred dollars? A hundred. My kids ain't coming back to school with the pack. You mean you had to you had to fill out the packet. Your parents, they take it home. This is back in the day. They had to enclose a check. They put a check in there with it. Man, carrying this big old thing to school. I'm getting school photos. School photos. 
<laughs> Damn, school photos, bro. Yeah, my kid ain't getting no school photos. We gonna be different. You know what I'm saying? We ain't look. All y'all kids is sheep. All y'all she's uh, kids is sheep. My kids ain't gonna follow the pack. Or uh, wait, 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 wait. my my kids ain't following the herd. Y'all kids are sheep. My kids ain't taking school photos. We are gonna be different. Yeah, we are gonna be different. Matter of fact, after school, I'm gonna have a, uh, I'm gonna have a camera. I'm gonna have a camera on the side of the building. I'm taking pictures with all the parents there. Y'all, y'all trying to make this? No, 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 no. We gonna have the parents there. Y'all can line up on the sidewalk. I'll take all your kids' photos for the school, and I can print off. Well, I ain't gonna print it off. We are gonna go up to U, uh, U, uh, UPS. We gonna print them all off. We gonna get the glossy paper too. You know what I mean? We are gonna get the glossy paper, and I'm just gonna give y'all that for five dollars back. You know what I mean? And you can go up there. I got like different. You know what I'm saying? I got different Photoshop edits, Lightroom shit I can do for you. Some filters if you need to. Don't be putting the filters on the kids. Let the kids be the kids. Whatever. Let the kids be the kids, but my kids ain't taking no school photos for no hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. What happened to Kinko's shit? They went out of sale. I mean, out of bit out of sale. They went out of business, didn't they? Kinko. No, they got Kinko's got bought by FedEx. Kinko's is owned by FedEx now. Then they popped out. I don't know where they got this confetti from for Papa, but they did it. That's what's up, though, man. These are some cool friends. Well, Bakari ended up getting his ass. Well, we done left school. See, this is why it's important to stay in school, people. This is why it's important to stay in school. Bakari, he ain't graduating with everybody. What are y'all in the streets doing? Getting pink, punk, pink, pow, ooh. Damn, eat out, oop, out, ow. They whooping his ass. That's what they doing out there in the streets, man. The streets will whoop your ass. The streets will consume you. Go get on that sidewalk, man. Don't ever let anyone tell you that you need to be out in those streets. Go get on that sidewalk, man. It ain't worth it, man. We've been there. We done that. We fucked around. But after all that, this is what I found. Nobody wants to be dead or in jail. So stay away from the streets, you fool. Because if not, you got it, you got it bad. When you're on the floor, punched out by your dough hole balls. Yeah, man, the streets ain't the place to be. Leave them alone. Just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. Oh, oh. Just leave me alone. Leave me alone. That was one of my favorite Michael Jackson songs of all time, man. Damn. Just leave me alone. Oh, just don't stop it. Yeah. They're like, man, what's up, man? Nook over here. He got the iced out Cuban. He got the Burberry jacket on that motherfucker fly. That that that, that clean. But that about like sixteen, seventeen hundred. That outmost price range. You know what I mean? It's cold as a motherfucker. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah, that that, that Burberry. That, that nice. That real nice. See, I gotta see how much that costs. You know, I might I might save up and get me one, but. I, if I if I buy me a Burberry Letterman, I'm wearing that Burberry Letterman all the time. As soon as the temperature drops to 79 degrees, I'm in my Burberry, baby. Damn, that nigga more wear that Burberry all the time. You goddamn right. For what I spent, I'm going to wear it every single day. It's cold outside. Let me go grab the Burberry. I'm going to my mama's house. Let me go grab the Burberry. I got to go get some gas. Let me go grab the Burberry. I got to go cut the grass. Let me go grab the Burberry. I'm wearing the Burberry at all times. I'm going to be on here with the Burberry. It don't matter. I'm going to be with the Burberry. That's what they, they want. Where you get that from? Man, I saved us some money. But you know, I'm flies a motherfucker all the time. That's one thing they can't say. 
And nigga Mo wasn't fly today, but he got the Burberry on, so that nigga technically was fly, even though it was the same fly from yesterday. But what that shows y'all is I'm consistent with my flyness. I hit that 50,000 altitude, baby. I'm flying in a motherfucker out here. You could barely breathe around me if I had the Burberry, but we ain't talking about the Burberry. We talking about Bakari buried on the floor. Now, Nook said we got the money, but what you want us to do with him? He said, oh, he'll figure it out. He'll figure it out. You figure it out. The chop shop is a scary place, y'all. The chop shop, we found out last week they got the chop chops in it. Well, you don't want to play around in here. That's one thing you don't do. And they got all these pallets over here. Let me see what kind of pallet jack they got. I can't tell. Bakari on the ground hurt. He'll figure it out. Face bruised up. Now, we have us a family meeting at the office. So now not only does the feds know that Duda was out here doing Lord knows what, the devil work, Victor was with Duda, and we got a photo. Now, one thing we always, always, always have to abide by, and this goes for everybody in real life also, we always have to abide by not saying anything to anyone except for who. Who is the only person you can tell this kind of information to? Not your mama. Not your dad. Not your personal assistant. Not your girlfriend. Not your friend. Not the pastor, not the guy pumping gas at the gas station if you were in Oregon or New Jersey. Not your little brother, not your best friend. You only tell this kind of information to your lawyer. Your lawyer is the only one. And you don't really have to tell your lawyer that, but most lawyers want you to tell them the truth because they can't say nothing anyway. But if they know the truth, they know how to angle their defense. You only talk to your lawyer in this situation. I don't care. Even if my mama came up to me, my mama came up and said, baby, what happened? You got to tell the police something. I got to say, hey, mama, get out of my face right now, mom. I don't want to. It hurts me more than it hurts you, mom. But I don't want to talk to you right now. I got to talk to my lawyer. I got to talk to my lawyer. My dad coming from this side, Paul. Get back up. Back up. I can't tell you nothing, pops. My little brother come. Yeah. Hey, back up. That guy, he tried to hug me. What's going on? I duck out that hug. Back up. Back up. I could only talk to my lawyer. I could only talk to my lawyer. Don't tell anybody any information, man. I didn't low-key mush my mom. I mushed my mom out. I mushed my dad. My brother. I can't talk to you. I got to talk to my lawyer. I got to talk to my lawyer. I can't talk to y'all. Not right now. Not never. Maybe after the trial, but not right now because I don't know who y'all know. Now, I know, like, y'all my family. Y'all would never turn on me, but I don't, like, when they apply that pressure, some people fold, and I don't know. I don't know who know who know what. You see what I'm saying? I don't want nobody to know nothing except for my lawyer. No, 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 no. I can't tell y'all nothing. Well, He's in here with his assistant. What up, Big Wolf? He's in here with his assistant talking about, yeah, man, I, I didn't kill the nigga, but I did. But I was not. I didn't. But I was there. So I was accessory. And then I was accessory to after the fact. And then I was aiding in the bed. Like, God damn. It's a lot of charges they can trump up against Victor in this case. Because they know what we know. And we know what they know. And they know that Vic know what he know. And Big know that they know. So right now it's very confusing. So it's best that you be the first one to go ahead. Gonna, and... gonna, gonna. I'm gonna tell. You're gonna have to tell in this situation, Victor. Your name is Victor Taylor. You are for the city council now. You are Councilman Taylor. You have an obligation to do the right thing. Even if that means turning yourself in. 
you took an oath. And in that oath, it told you to do the right thing like Spike Lee. And doing the right thing is hitting that like button right now and hitting that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Also, if you can help me out, I have a new channel called The Mo You Know. It's pinned in the comment section. Go ahead and subscribe to that channel. Also, we talk about some real life, you know, saying situations over there. We got a couple of real life. We got the prisoner that's gone. That's real life. We watching him. He didn't change up his appearance. Got rid of the mustache, the beard, cut the hair off. He on the run. We keeping track of that. We got Hurricane Lee. We got a lot of stuff over there on the Mo. You know, so it's more of a serious channel, but not serious, but it's serious. So if you could subscribe to that channel also, I'm trying to get to 200 subscribers. But hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hopefully Councilman Victor Taylor does tell the truth. Hopefully he does tell the truth. And if he tells the truth, then we'll all be more satisfied with the show because right now is it, it, it ain't right. I already complained about people voting for Victor. I keep asking who voted for Victor. Because this is who's in office right now. We're letting this guy just skate up on the radar, and we know that he's a thug. Right now, we know that he is involved in the murder, and we're just letting him walk around the city of Chicago like he's holier than thou? No, he's not. I can tell you one thing. We are not the same. We are not one of you. We're we not doing this, Victor. We are not the people of the city. We are the people of chicago not of the city of chicago and you took an oath victor so victor's in here with you and fatima and fatima talk about tell the truth go and tell the truth tell the truth tell the truth uh the truth will not set you free that is a lie that saying is false the truth will get you locked up the truth will get you 25 the truth will get you unless you drop a dime now now if you drop a dime and tell the truth then the truth shall set you free but you know, it is what it is shout out to gunner he performed last night crazy sold out show they going crazy for him they don't even give a fuck but victor he's thinking like damn if i tell i'm a street nigga though at heart but guess what when you put on that suit and tie you leave all that behind you that's what we thought we thought when these, I'm not going to call them fools. I'm not going to call them fools. When when the residents voted for Victor, we thought we were going to get a change. The whole time, they elected a murderer. Murderer. He's no different than Simba when Simba killed Mufasa. Simba killed Mufasa. You remember Scar told him you killed Mufasa. That's the same thing he did. He killed an unarmed man. And he was participating in this too. I don't know if we're ever going to get back from this, y'all. We might not ever shake back. Right now, the city is in shambles. There's a lot of corruption going down. We got backdoor deals with Duda. In the councilman, we got bodies dropping because of Duda in the councilman. It's a lot of shit in Chicago right now. We thought that it was going to get cleaned up once Victor got elected. Little did we know we're in over our heads. We don't even know where we're at anymore. Now I understand why they call it Chirac because of this councilman here. He's a motherfucking murderer. And the feds know. And I'm just waiting for the feds to come and drop that dime. And if one of y'all got to go ahead and get it started, the then go ahead. Yeah, this the FBI. Call him. The FBI. Yeah, this the FBI. Call him. Call him up. Then we got Papa in the pool pit talking to Pops. So, Dad, welcome to Papa's pool pit. Tonight we got something special for y'all. I'm Papa. And when live in studio, we got Papa's Papa in Papa's pool pit. So, Pops, let me go ahead and ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. I want to hold you up all night. I just want to pick your brain and see where you're at. So, Pops, first question. Um, numero uno. Uh, what is the best thing about being a father? Pops is talking about, well, you know, the best thing about being a dad is watching my son grow up and becoming the man I knew he could and just yeah I was hard on you when you were a child I, I was kind of rough but 
It was hard. I didn't want you in these streets. I didn't want you running around with the riffraff. But now it's a bonus knowing that you're a week away from graduating, going to prom. Son, I'm proud of you. This is exactly what I was expecting from you. You were going to find your way. You're going to do your own thing. Papa said, Pops, I love you. I said, damn. This is a precious moment right here. This is rare right here. This is rare that you get to see two black men, a father and a son, just open up to each other and just, just love one another openly. You, you just don't never see this, man. You never see this. Pastor sitting down with his son. Papa in his pool pit. They just a kicking it and a rocking. Then he says, what don't you like about being a dad? What don't you like about being a dad? He said, man, to be honest with you, Shit. Can I curse on here? Can I curse on here? Well, worst part about being a dad is knowing that at some point you can become your own man and, and leave and go off and do your own thing. This is a, a point where you'll feel like you'll never need me to protect you anymore. I said, man, they love one another. They love one another. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. And Papa's like, thank you, Dad. I love you. And he said, well, Papa, I don't know if you've known, but in your 17 years, three weeks before your 18th birthday, I don't know if you've known or not, but this right here, this pocket watch been in the family for four generations. You're going to make the fourth one to wear this watch, Papa. I didn't even know if you knew what I had. You didn't even know that I had this watch, but you're going to be the fourth generation. And I want you to cherish this watch and know that your father, your father's father, and your father's father, father before him all had this pocket watch. Kind of like Lieutenant Dane when his whole family lineage died in a war. Well, Papa got a watch because we know that time isn't always on our side. Time is on my side. Yes, it is. I'm thinking of a master plan. No, I'm lying. I got shorty on my mind. You know what I mean? He gets a pocket watch. I got a pocket watch. One day, if I ever have kids, I'm going to give my son my pocket watch. And then maybe he'll do the same. And then maybe they'll do the same. Or maybe my son will just throw it away and forget about me and my legacy will be gone. Who knows? Who knows? Who cares? But Papa gets a pocket watch from his dad. <laughs> Papa said, I'll always take care of this watch. Good time. Good time. Well, if you remember, Darnell just gave the gun back to our boy Emmett. Now, we haven't seen what Emmett did with that Thule yet, but at this moment, he put the earpiece back in. That's when he's in relax mode. Relax mode, earpiece goes in. You know what I mean? He pulls up, and he's seeing something wrong with Jada. He's like, what's wrong? He said, I don't know, man. It's just, I just don't know. He's like, yeah, man, I was talking to him earlier, and him, he asked for the gun back. I don't know why. I don't know what he's about to get into. I said, man, these two best friends. But, boy, when I tell you that this part right here was pointless, like we didn't get any information from this little Two second segment or whatever it was. I don't even know what you would call it because I was watching. I said, why did they put this in here? Why they put this in here? But it might be foreshadowing, foreshadowing for Jada to be saying that she's noticing something in the near future is off with Emmett. Well, I mean, hell, now it's making sense now I'm watching it. Maybe because and he's even feeling bad because he knows that he ain't do right by Emmett and gave Emmett the, oh, okay, it makes sense. So they just did this to lead us up. Okay, okay, we good. My bad. That was me. But anyway. We back on the couch and they both thinking about Emmett and noticing that, man, things might not be right. Now, Bakari shows up and he's trying to talk to Lene, but of course she's on punishment, man. She just got arrested, bro. But he doesn't have any guidance. So when he comes over to 515, shout out to Kendall. When he comes over to 515, he doesn't understand that there's discipline within certain homes. 
but he should know this because he's staying at Papa's house and he knows that Papa's house, Papa don't play. Papa don't preach because I'm in trouble. You see what I'm saying? But he comes over here and he doesn't understand that there's consequences for people's actions. So Lene is on punishment. She upstairs in the attic. She come outside, she look at him sideways. She said, what are you doing here? He said, man, can I, can I talk to Lene? She said, hell no, Lene don't punish me. He said, I, I want to apologize. She said, apologize for what? You fucked up, man. You fucked up. Apologize for what? He said, man, I wish I would have never had her in that car. Because it turns out the Lamborghini was stolen. They were speeding. If he was a year older, jail. Probably about to get about five years, six years, GTA. Damn. But she's saying, no, you cannot talk to her. He said, man, can you at least tell her I came by? She said, yeah, I can. I don't want to. I probably won't, but yeah, I can. Then he walks out of here. He beat up, though, man. This right here is a lot of pride. I got beat up. I did this for you, bae. I did this for you. This is bigger than us. I'm doing it for the fam. Right now, he's thinking if he go in the jungle and he ain't got a coat, I bet he come out with a mink. I bet he come out with a mink. As he leaves, Big Bruh pulls up. Big Bruh pulls up. Let me hop in the truck. So he just riding around the neighborhood. He must really be on city watch. Ever since he got that job at The Rock, he's been assisting. He's city watch. So he just rides around the streets. He's basically a truant officer. You know what I'm saying? The truancy officer. That only... Are those only in, like, major cities? Because we didn't have a truancy officer. Is that only for, like, big cities? Because we never had someone to just ride around and pick people up if they weren't in school. You know what I mean? That means y'all got to be bad as hell. If there's a truancy officer riding around and collecting kids and taking them to school, hey, man. <laughs> hey, bro. Y'all got to do something with that school district, man. We ain't had none of that. The truancy officer. I wish a truancy officer would try to get me. Man, you're going to have to be up for a run because back then I was active. I'm hitting fences. I'm in the backyard. I'm getting low. A truancy officer. Man, what happened, man? Why you at school today? Man, a truancy officer got me. What? He did? Where he catch you at? Man, I'll go to McDonald's, man. Damn, nigga, you got caught. <laughs> so he see Bakari and Bakari toe up too. Damn. He said, man, get in the truck, man. Get in the truck, man. This is a nice truck, too. What is it, a 250 or 150? Man, come get in the truck, man. Let me holler at you. Oh, this is going on. Victor Taylor, he has a lot on his mental. And he goes to the place I told y'all not to go. Go talk to your lawyer. Well, he goes to the church and he says, listen. What up, Hiley? What up, Hiley? He goes to the church and says, Pastor, I'm fighting demons right now. I got a lot on my mental. The feds are coming knocking. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a street nigga at heart. And I, I can't say nothing, man. You know how it is, Pastor. You know how these streets are. But I also got an issue. They know some stuff that they shouldn't know about your boy. You know what I'm saying? There's a couple of people connected in this thing, and I, I just don't know what's going to happen. Patch is like, well, you need to do the right thing. Because he who finds the Lord with a good woman, <laughs> he shall find his way. With the Lord and a good woman, he shall find his way. He's seeking the Lord. He said, Pastor, I got a lot of stuff. It's just weighing in on my mental, sir. I don't know how I'm going to overcome this one, sir. I don't know how I'm going to overcome this one, sir. I just don't. Pastor looked at him and said, son, 
I don't either, but man, do to keep fucking with me too. So right now, like I said, in this five block radius, everybody is scared of Duda. I don't know why or how, but they're scared of Duda. So he's sitting here. He's about to confess all his sins to pastor. I'm like, nah, don't do that. Don't do that, man. Pastor looks at him. He's like, get out of here. Now, remember now, Emmett went and got that gun. As 50 Cent would say, go get the strap. You know what I mean? Emmett then pulled the toolie out. He said, look, man, I ain't working with you no more, man. I'm done with this shit. Duda looked at him and said, He said, man, I ain't doing no negotiating with your bitch ass with that gun in my face. I said, ooh. <laughs> Emmett said, man, I'm done. He said, I'm not negotiating with you. We don't negotiate with terrorists. He said, hey, you ain't going to pull that trigger, then you ain't going to pull that trigger. But Emmett said, look, I'm going to pay you off. I'm going I'm to I'm 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 buy myself out this contract, baby. I'm going to buy myself out this contract. Dude said, what? Buy yourself out this contract. I said, hell yeah, I'm going to buy myself out. Dude said, you don't make no negotiating over here now. He walked up to him, took the gun. He did the same move. He did the same move that Chris Tucker did. The FBI. Yeah, this is the FBI. Remember when he took the gun? Jackie taught him how to take the gun. Carter and Lee. Lee. Carter. Lee. Carter. You remember? Whoa. Ooh, hey, you God, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Ah! I said, Emmett about to pull the trigger. Nope. Nope. Emmett did not pull the trigger. He did not get an opportunity to do what he was supposed to do because he was practicing in the mirror. And I told y'all he wasn't built like I'm that. I'm not even built like that, Tommy. That ain't even me, yo. Now his ass is on the ground. On the ground, which makes me bring this up. Oh, you get your up. What makes me bring this up? This is what he just did to Emmett, y'all. This is what he just did to Emmett. Oh, you get your up. I grab your ass. Get up. No, he gotta be tough. He whooped him in the ass so bad the young boy said, Listen, I'm gonna tell you something. Go home and get the gun. He said, Man, he gotta be tough, man. This is what he just did to Emmett, y'all. This is what he just did. Get out with that. You get your ass up. That's what they just did to Emmett, man. That's what they just did to Emmett. Go home and get the gun. You got to tell someone else to do it because you ain't going to do it. You got to go get the gun. Oh, damn. Every time I watch that video, it just makes me laugh, man. That little boy, they did something bad to that kid, man. They whooped his ass. And his boy was talking about, man, he got to be tough, man. He got to be tough. He said, Omar, let me tell you something. Go home and get the gun. Run. The little kid in the background said, damn. <laughs> damn. Damn, man. Man, he done whooped him his ass. Then he told this nigga Emmett to stand up and put a bullet to his noggin, bro. Ain't no way, man. Ain't no way. At this point, we got to fight, bro. Like, I know he just, hey, 
the gun empty now. The gun empty. We got to throw hands at this point. We got to throw hands. You got to take your chances at this point, or you can go home and be a man. You could go home and be a man. That's the best option, especially for someone like Emmett, dog. You got kids, man. And you got that house. You know Keisha can't pay that mortgage. Keisha ain't got no goddamn job, and her name on the mortgage. Keisha name on the mortgage. If he died, y'all think she's going to be able to make those payments? Be real. Put a five in the chat if you think that Keisha can make those payments if Emmett dies. So it might be best for Emmett to just leave this situation alone, wipe your hands clean, uh, pay him off, tell the police, do something. Like, you're a family man now. You you can go ahead and tell the police, man. Because this right here is just... This is some shit that should never happen to a grown man. You should never be in a situation where this happens. You know what I mean? You following what I'm saying? You know, in the military, they say track it. If I say something, you're supposed to agree by saying track it. You need to go tell the police. Nigga. Are you tracking? I'm tracking, tracking. Like, Hell no, nah, man. Go tell the police or go get the gun. Go home and get the other gun. You know what? I'm going to go look hard. I'm going to get my other gun. <laughs> now, we find out Gemma's losing money because she ain't going to college at the moment. Pops is over here tripping. I keep forgetting this girl's name. She be throwing that thing on Pops. You know what I mean? But they laughing around, and she is older, but not as old as Pop. Papa St. John, or whatever his name is. Man, you know, I don't be knowing none of these people's names except for Gemma. Uh, Y'all remind me and then I forget all the time, man. But these two then became BFFs. Who would have thunk it? These two former ops, both of them calling Pop's dad, but for different meanings. One says dad, the other says daddy. All of that is a pause. But they got some grapefruit out here. Mm -hmm. Ooh, what's this? Avocado on toast? What? They rich as a motherfucker. They rich as hell. They got avocado on toast. Who eat avocado on toast at the house? You got to have some money to have avocado in the morning. Avocado isn't something you just wake up and like, man, let me put some avocado on the toast. You know, I got to go to the store and give me some fresh avocado. Oh, what you about to make? Oh, I just like to spread the avocado on my toast. Pause. <laughs> in the morning time? Yeah, man, for breakfast. Oh, you got to have a little bit of money to do that. You got to have a little bit of money to do that. Avocado for breakfast and grapefruit. Oh, man, you got all the delicacies. <laughs> She's supposed to be filling out college applications because if she doesn't go to college, then she'll go to community college. Now, a lot of people say that college is a scam, but is it? It's never it's never wrong to educate yourself. The scam part is you putting yourself in debt. If you know it's a scam, then don't put yourself in debt. Just pay for what you got at the moment. Work a class off. Don't be trying to take no fool schedule if you ain't got the money for it. Pops is looking out for his daughter. I wish I would have had an opportunity to go to college right after high school. We ain't had that kind of money. So instead, I got me a J-O-B. He told her she got to fill out the applications by hand. Filling out a college application by hand is ridiculous. I filled out probably four. I did two at school. No, I only did three. I did one at home on my own. And that's why I said I wasn't applying for no more colleges. Because it was, man, fuck all that. I need to get all the information from my parents and shit. How much? I'm like, man, nah, I'm good on that. <laughs> I'm good on that. But Marcus said, man, you're going to get you a job and go to school. Now, these two are riding. And for some reason, I didn't know why he was talking to him with his low voice. I didn't know if Keisha could make those payments or not. Y'all said she was, you know what I'm saying? Like, Emmett's paying for the, the, the doctor. 
Well, for the therapist, the, the kids, the food. So I thought she was covering the mortgage. I thought I thought she was covering the mortgage. So hold on, she's not covering the mortgage. So if Emmett dies, they lose the house. And then her name, the house is going to go into foreclosure. So it's going to be a ding on her credit. So she's inputting zero. He's doing 100. But if something goes bad, then that 100 is going to go down to zero for both. And then there'll be nothing. So maybe, maybe 50-50 doesn't sound that bad. Because if they do 50-50, they can save some money on the scissor. And if in the event that Emmett died, they won't be asked out with no money. But hey. The numbers make sense. Women lie, men lie, but numbers in Mo don't lie. Numbers in Mo don't lie. So maybe if she got a job and helped out with you know, some of the mortgage, some of the utilities, the bill, just here and there, half that motherfucker, when these bad situations come up, we would have some money in the savings that we can pull from to make sure, you know what I'm saying, the hold us over, be a little crutch for a little bit. But no, this is what 100 to zero looks like. In the end, it's zero for everybody. Not just you, but for everybody. Now, we're supposed to be talking about young Bakari over here taking it from the OG Pauls about the street life. But Keisha can't afford that mortgage. Keisha ain't had a job but for one week, two weeks maybe. She got fired so damn quick. I ain't ever seen nobody get fired that fast from work. She got fired faster than Craig. She got fired faster than Craig. Let's neither hear or there. And guess what? <clears throat> he was talking to him like this the whole ride. <clears throat> Man, I know them streets ain't safe for nobody out there. Hey, hey, man, why are you whispering? They just talk normal to me. You think you know, but you have no idea how it really is in those streets. Prison ain't the place for no man, especially not no weak one. You're away from the family, fighting for survival every single day. Someone telling you when to get up, when to eat, when to take a shower, when to shit, when to sleep, when to sit down. You don't even know who you are anymore. You're reduced to just some fucking number. Jail ain't for you. And I've been where you've been. And trust me, you don't want to, ooh, you don't want to go where I went. So Bakari's sitting there, he's listening. He's like, man, I know I messed up, man. Is Lene done talking to me? He said, man, that's between you and her, but maybe right now it's good that you two have some separation just to let things die down so you both can think and find out who you really are. Because you run these streets, it don't look too good in the end, brother. A lot of people don't make it out of this with their dignity, with their pride, with their health, with their time. So make the right decision. I said, damn. He needed that. He needed that. Especially for someone that looks like him. You couldn't receive that information or knowledge. You could not receive that from Papa. You couldn't receive that from Papa's father. No. You needed to hear that from someone that's been down that path. The road less traveled. Someone that's been down there. Sometimes it isn't best to be first. Sometimes second, third, fourth, fifth, even a hundred. is better than being first. Because the person that goes through it first, they suffer the most because they didn't know their way. They didn't. USA got fourth place in FIBA. World champions of what? But they live to fight another day. Sometimes it ain't always good to be first. They got beat by Canada. Oh, Canada. Oh, Canada. But at the end of the day, all of those gentlemen are rich. And, hey, man, the NBA is starting back up. But at least you tried. Bakari needs to try to find himself. And when I mean himself, 
the good in himself. You see what I'm saying? The goodness. Because right now, Bakari is a lost soul. Even Victor. Yes, Victor. You remember Victor used to be the nigga named Trig. He didn't change his ways. Yeah, there's a body on his resume, a couple of bodies, but he's trying to change. He's trying to change, and it's just weighing on his shoulders that human goddamn dude that caught a body. So he goes in here, and he's talking to this gentleman. We're like, who is he talking to? Is it the feds? Is it the law? Is it Darnell? Who is he talking to? He's talking to Rob. And Rob just made the easiest hundred thousand dollars he didn't ever made. But wait a minute, he's not making a hundred thousand dollars. A hundred thousand dollars is finding information and doing more. He has the information. So this is only 50, 50, like we were talking about Keisha and Emmy. You want that whole hunt done, you gotta go do something. He only getting that 50 right now. And I'd go tell my, hey, I got the information. I only need the 50. I changed my mind. I don't need the 100. I'll just do the 50. If I'm getting 50 just for some information from my mom, oh, all I'm just taking the 50. I don't need the whole 100. I'm not about to go do no sliding. I'm not about to get up here in these streets and act like I'm something I'm not and go catch a body. No, I got information. Here's the information, mom. I need that 50000 in cash. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Making big bills, all hundons. I don't do the little fitties. <laughs> Your boy got a fitty piece, but I don't do the little fitties, mama. Come on. Big face hunting, all blue strips. I need them. I need them today, too. I got the information. Now, he's looking at Victor like, Victor, why are you giving me this information now, man? You were there. Was Q dead? Did you do anything? He said, no, nah, I ain't do nothing. But he was kicking and gasping for air. And then do the shot him three times and I got back in the car. Why you just not telling me, man, I had to, bro? What? What do you mean you had to? What do you mean you had to? You were there when my uncle died and you didn't do nothing? You didn't say nothing? He said, why you ain't do nothing? I'm going to tell you why I ain't do that. Nigga had a gun, man. What do you want me to do? Wrestle with this nigga? Do that, you motherfucker. Goddamn, do that. Don't do it. Why'd you do that, dude? What am I supposed to do? Fight this nigga one-on-one? -on -one? The nigga had a gun. I just told you he popped the nigga three times. The fuck you mean I didn't do nothing? The nigga had a gun. I got back in the car. Where to next, dude? I got back in the car. What the fuck you mean? I didn't do nothing. Can we listen to some tunes? <laughs> Gotta listen to some music. <laughs> can we listen to some music on the ride at least? He said, yeah, we can, but it's got to be my song. No, not that one. No, no. Mr. Duda, are you good? You comfortable? Warm? Want me to turn the AC on? What you want? You get some food? You want to pick up something? You need anything else? What do you mean? Did I do anything, nigga? I went to do with Duda ass, nigga. He just shot Q three times. Pink, pink, pink. What the fuck you mean? I didn't do nothing. No, nigga. Did I do something? Obviously, I didn't because Duda alive and I'm here, nigga. What do you mean? What do you mean that I do something? No, nigga, I'm telling you to do something. The fuck? Q wasn't my, he wasn't, he wasn't my uncle, nigga. That's your uncle. The fuck, nigga? What do you mean? Well, did I do something? No. I got in the car. I got in the car like everyone in the chat would have gotten in the car. Y'all can talk tough if you want, but we all got in the car. We all got in the car and we drove this nigga dude uh, <laughs> sitting up too. Now you scared as hell. You know when you drive, you got to be a 10 and 2 seatbelt on, music turned all the way down and laser focus. Y'all just got rid of a body. You even putting your hand out the window uh, to signal you turning. 
putting the stop sign out the window. Like, nigga, who drives like that, man? You ain't on no bicycle, man. Put your goddamn hand back in the window, man. The fuck you doing drawing attention over here? You waving the police? What are you doing over there? Man, dude, it would have put that pistol to you. He talking about you ain't do nothing, nigga. I gave you the information. You go do something. You go do something tough, guys. Your uncle, nigga, you go do something. Ask me, did I do something? Hell no, I ain't do nothing. <laughs> I ain't do nothing. Shit, man. I was listening to Robinson, man. Rob, you tripping. Then we got Stacy Marks, aka Dre, her and her ex. I guess I mean I they said so I don't know. This is what they said on the show. They said lesbi lesbians can be friends with their ex lesbian lovers. I I ain't know that. I did not know that. Interesting to know. Every day you learn something. You know what I mean? Like I didn't know that. Like it's just cool. Like the L, yeah, it's the L and yeah, lesbian. Yeah, okay, yeah. So it's the L in the community. They are okay with being best friends with the. Oh, okay, cool. That's what's up. Well, they work together, so they might as well at least be cordial, correct? They don't have to be BFFs, but they could be cordial. You know what I'm saying? What's up? You better get something to eat. All right, we're going to get something. It's lunchtime. We all eating at the same lunchtime. You know what I mean? All right, cool. There we go. She's like, damn, you've been busy. You ain't been stopping by to see me. I said, wait a minute. This don't sound like just trying to be friends. This sound like you trying to push back up on our dog, Dre. Nah, what you, what's going on here? We supposed to be professional. She said, yeah. You ain't been around in a while. She's like, look, I'm trying to keep it professional. I'm married. I got a good thing going on at the crib. Like, I ain't trying to fuck up nothing. She's like, oh, it ain't nothing like that. We could just be friends. Oh, I know that line. You can't have no friend. Like, Damn. Niggas be saying that shit, too. But you can't have no friend. Man, nigga. You don't even call the niggas you hang with friend. You talking about you can't have no friends. Man, get the fuck out her face, man. But I guess lesbians, they like Ari said, the L and lesbian stands for lifelong friendships. Okay, that makes sense. All right. So they can be friends. Bet. I never knew that. Just being real. So, oh, okay. So, it's just as a, all right, bet. I don't know how to explain it, but all right, bet. Dre cool as hell, though. Dre look like she can hoop. If we being honest, Dre look like she can hoop. We put her on the rock team. Man, I bet Dre go out there and put up a double-double every night. Dre will probably average, like, I got Dre is 16, 16, 17, 17 point. Yeah, we're going to do 17 points and an 11 uh, assists. 17, 11, and 3. That's what Dre will hoop. If you put her in the community rec league and they play for Team Rock, man, you might win the championship. 17, 11, and 3. That sounds good as hell in the rec league. And I bet the best friend to come. <laughs> I bet the best friend to come. She'll show up. Now, I was doing a little bit of research before we got on. This is Ahmad's real, uh, well, Bakari's real name is Ahmad, but this is his real life sister. This is his real sister here. Oh, let me see. Because I'm like, who is this? Yes, yeah, it's Bakari. Hold on, let me see. Like, this is real sister. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that crazy? <laughs> I was like, damn, that's cool, man. To me, that hey, I, I I like that. They brought his real sister on here. That's cool. That's what's up. Hey, they look just alike too, don't they? <laughs> they look just alike. I I had just seen his, his page that popped up on my Instagram. I was like, damn, I didn't know that was his sister. 
But they look just alike, though. He was too happy as a kid. Look at him. Boy, this Christmas was lit, I bet. He probably got a uh he probably got Nintendo 64 or something, man. See, kids, they started getting better and better gifts, man. He probably got a yeah, he probably got a Nintendo 64 for a, a gift. Or nah, I gotta see how old he is. If it's 20 years ago, shit, he may have got a PS2. Boy, I bet this Christmas was crazy. Hey, this is the picture my sister was talking about. They got the fireplace back here. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Let me see. Hey, they do look just alike, too. <laughs> hey, this kind of looked like they could have did this as a recreation of uh, Tariq and Raina. <laughs> because, hey, and that's how uh, Tariq be dressing. It's a recreation um, <laughs> of uh, Tariq and Raina. Power Book Six, the Chicago edition. <laughs> the Tommy spinoff. These kids, this is what they do. But she do music. She's staying over at Papa's Pop's house. So she she back in the city. She asked around, found out where her brother was. She be rapping now. She getting back into music. So he like, damn, for real? She said, yeah, hell yeah. She said, I wish I could help you out with finding a place, but I can't. You know, I'm staying over at my dog's house. But let's stay in contact because, you know, once they got into the foster homes, he ended up in the streets. And that's how he's over here. She's just now getting back in the city. So it's good that they linking back up, though, and they exchange their numbers. That's what's up. Well, back at the damn Taylor household, there's a lot of bullshit going on. And by bullshit, I mean Victor. I mean Trig. I mean, I don't know who this criminal is. I hate to do it. We we don't like stereotyping over on my channel, but this thug, we don't know who he is. I don't like calling my brothers thugs, but this criminal, this crook, this murderer is walking around the house like... Like shit, sweet. Like life is life. I'm like no, nah, man. So they sitting down. Fatima still telling this nigga, "You got to tell. You got to tell the truth." Gonna, gonna, gonna. I'm gonna tell. But in the same breath, Fatima not only tells him, "You got to tell the feds the truth." He also says, "What will happen to us if you tell the truth?" Uh, newsflash, Fatima. You told me to tell. What are you talking about? What would happen between us? You told me to tell. If I tell, I'm going to jail. If I tell, I'm going to jail. What do you mean what would happen? I said, you're just contradicting yourself, Fatima. One minute you want this nigga to go in there and be the man that he should be. Gonna, gonna, gonna. I'm gonna tell. But then in the next moment, if he does go and tell, they never thought about what the consequences would be of being an accessory to the murder. Listen, the fans got photos. I know one thing, 2 Chains taught me, I'm going to be fresh as hell if the feds is watching. That's one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to be fresh as hell if the feds is watching. That's what I'm going to do. But Vic, mm. Mm -mm -mm. Jake comes in the house and he gets upset with Jake. Jake said, man, what you mad at me for, man? I'm a grown-ass man, too. I'm about to graduate. He said, no. No, as long as you living up under my roof. And Fatima said, Jake, it's all right. He said, no, let me talk to my brother. She said, no, you ain't going to talk to him like that. Not up in this house. And he's trying to remember what he was going to say to Jake. Jake's like, man, I ain't going to my room. I ain't no little kid. I said, oh, here we go. Here we go. Because I live next door and they always yelling over here. One thing you know about the Taylor household is going to be a party. It's going to be a gathering. It's going to be noise. There's going to be arguing. There might be some shooting. You never know with the Taylor household. So when I'm hearing all this yelling, I'm just thinking, oh, it's another day. It's another Sunday in the neighborhood. You know what I mean? But he's like, get out of here, Jake. You don't need to hear this. this is, man, this, this is deeper than rap, Jake. Jake's like, man, fuck you, Trig. And he goes to the room. Now, once we leave from here, we go back to the Williams household. Now, Dre and Nina, they into it. 
Oh no, this is way I'm uh, I'm oh, oh man, I had already seen the episode. She goes to talk to Tracy and Jada, and they start talking about how her ex is up there, but we found out that lesbians they can be friends with their ex and it's all right. So it's not really that big of a deal, but Tracy's still looking for a man, but Tracy still want to let Duda get in between. I said, damn, there's a lot of shit going on. Now, Jada, she does mention that she did marry her ex, which was Darnell, but, you know, it is what it is, right? But now they're all talking about it. Dre's like, man, look, just being honest, it ain't nothing, man. We just at work. We just at work. Just at work. Hey, Eric, I already said, if someone can give me the episode, I'll go back and watch, and we'll try to figure out if anyone took a picture of him, like trying to set him up, or if it was actually the feds, because that would be a, a little twist if it was somebody in the streets. But Kari took the picture. <laughs> but yeah, basically, ladies ain't talking about nothing. Dre lit that cigarette, because she's supposed to go home and be honest. And let her know the truth. Like, hey, hey, Nina, I'm just going to be real with you. They got my ex up here. You know what I mean? It ain't nothing. We're going to be having lunch with each other probably three, four days out the week. Uh, carpooling to work to and from. Uh, we'll be having solo meetings between her and I. Just letting you know, you know, we'll be around each other a lot. And then after hours, you might have to go grab a drink or two and handle some meetings. You know what I'm saying? Things of that nature. I'm just letting you know up front that my ex is going to be working with me. Now, if the woman that I'm with can't understand that me and my ex, we just working with each other and it ain't nothing, we're probably going to see each other maybe 16 out of 24 hours out of the day, then you might not be the one for me because I, I got to handle business. This is what I got to do. It's part of the job. It's part of the job. Sometimes on the weekends, I got to stay late, got to go to work, stay at the office. Sometimes I got to do this stuff, man, but it comes with the job. It comes with the job. It could be Fatima. Because remember, she said, what are, what are we going to do about all we build? We haven't built anything. Victor built this shit. You were telling on Victor. You was against Victor last year. Remember, last year you was writing everything negative about Victor. Especially when Victor was with the other nigga. Uh, fucking uh, Imani. What do you mean, what we built? You ain't built nothing. <laughs> this nigga Victor built this shit. Now we overlooking the Tracy. She love fucking with that nigga Duda, though. I don't even remember when we were oh, we talking about going back to the crib, Dola. Man, we be lost. Oh, yeah. Now, this house is nice right here. The spiral staircase. The spiral staircase. Now, this is nice. Got wood floor. Did we got, oh, man. They, whew. This is granite, too. This is the real deal right here. We got the wood floor right next to it. Now, that, that, that's a masterpiece right there. We seamless too. Oh, they got the pillars in the house. You know you got money. You got the pillars in the house. This is already too many stairs for me. I can go up about 14, 15 stairs up and down. This is about 30, 40. Just a lot of stairs to go up there and get in the bed. I got to put me a spare bedroom downstairs so I can just sleep down there. I got to have energy to go up them stairs. You know what I mean? You can't just go up these stairs. In the middle of the night, man, you walking around in socks, you got to because that floor get cold. Don't tell me they got heated floors. Don't tell me they got heated floors. They got heated floors then. But anyway, mama show up. Said, look, I got some information on this gangster. She said, some information. He said, yeah, some information. I need that hundred thousand, ma. She said, oh, hell no. Hell no. The deal is... You do a little something, something for a little something, something. Not you do a little something for a little something, something. You see what I'm saying? You don't do a little something for some something, something. No, you got to do some something, something for some something, something. You know what I mean? No, 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 no. You do one something, you only get a little something. You know what I'm saying? You do two something, you get the double something. A little something, something. You know what I mean? He talking about, man, this gangster, man. Duda did it. D-O-U-D. 
D-A, Duda. That's what he's telling his mom. She said, who did it? He said, Duda. Who? Duda. Mama, do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Duda kill Q, ma. Now, I'll take that 50000 I don't need the other something, something. I just need a little something. Just a little something to go get started. I'll take that 50000 and you can do what you please with that information, ma. But I ain't no killer. I ain't no killer, but don't push me. And 100000 surely ain't enough. Come on, ma. He said, I don't walk around. I don't do this every day. We just seen Emmett get slapped down. We seen Emmett get chumped so bad they took the bullet out the gun and put the bullet on his forehead. That's how much time they had to scare this nigga Emmett. Duda ain't playing. What you think he about to do with motherfucker 6 9 Goddamn Rob. He about to whoop this nigga ass too. Rob ain't even got no gun. Emmett at least had a gun. Rob ain't got no gun. Hell, they already disrespecting Rob. They just robbed the car last week. They robbed the car last week. They don't respect Rob over there. Dude, is, he's a madman. He's a madman. But again, nobody fears Duda except for these niggas in this five-mile radius of the church. I won't even say five-mile radius. Five blocks. Five miles is a huge radius. Five blocks <laughs> within five blocks of the church. Ain't nobody scared of Duda. It's only one motherfucking realtor in the city of Chicago. Man, please. Now, Nina is upset. We just get out a little bit of drama to jump back in some more. Nina's upset because Dre just told us that, listen, lesbians can be friends with their ex lesbian lovers that's law that's law that's what she just told us it is it's nothing wrong with that so i don't know, understand why nina is mad what's is nina mad what was she mad for y'all didn't they just say the l stands for long lasting friendships like didn't they just say that it's okay it's okay. It's okay. There's her ex. It's just it's it's her ex. She can she can work with her. She can be friends. It's nothing wrong with being cordial. Come on, Nina. I thought Nina. Hey, come on, Nina. Dre says, "Listen, I don't have any desire to be with anybody else but you," which is a compliment. And she said, "Oh, what are you trying to say, huh? What are you trying to say?" I'm like, Nina, calm down. Dre didn't say nothing wrong. She didn't say nothing wrong. She didn't say nothing wrong, did she? She said, I don't desire to be with anybody but you. That means I really want to be with you. Yeah. In all my life, baby, baby, pray for someone like you. And I thank God that I, that I finally met you. Yeah, that's all. That's all. Kev pops up. Kev pops up and Kev says, hey, what's going on? Nina said, oh, you just popping up over here now, huh? You can't just be popping up over here. We having a conversation. He was like, well, I kind of didn't just pop up, y'all. I kind of didn't just pop up. Uh, Mom, I told mom that uh, I was going to come over here. She said, oh, now I'm the last one to know everything. I said, damn, Nina, what is wrong? It might be that time of the month. Nina's a little, mm, I don't know if I want to be around Nina right now. Nina is mad, and I don't know why she's mad at us. We just showed up with Kevin. We ain't got nothing to do with this. We ain't got nothing to do with this. <laughs> Kev says, listen, man, sit down. I got something to tell y'all. <clears throat> to live and die in LA is the place to be. I'm going, going back, back to Cali, Cali, California, love. 
Yeah, California dreaming on such a winter day. Yeah, he said, listen up, y'all, I'm going to L.A., nigga. They paying for housing. They giving your boy a car. I'm about to take this game and shit serious. We about to take it to the top. We about to take it to the top. She said, you can't be playing the game the rest of your life. He said, that's a lie, mom. I don't want to call you a liar, but that nigga Mo, 38, he played the game. Mo played the game. You can play the game all your life, take care of your priorities, and go enjoy the game later. Enjoy the game later, man. I can get off it right now. Go play the game. Go play the game a little bit, a little bit too. Actually, turn the PlayStation on, man. Hopefully, it ain't turning on. But yeah, man. He said, I'm chasing my dream, mom. I'm doing what I want to do. She said, oh, you're just going to move this far away? Why don't you do it here in Chicago? Well, I don't want to get shot in Chicago. Mom, it's dangerous out here. I don't know if you know, but they didn't whoop Bakari's ass today. Bakari got his ass whooped today. A couple of hours ago, that's what I heard on the street. They said Bakari got his ass whooped, nigga, face swollen. He already moved out, and now she's mad that he's about to go pursue his dream. Dre was like, shit, I'm putting a good word for you. That's what's up. Enjoy yourself, man. Live. See the world. You don't ever, ever want to wake up and say, what if? What if I would have done this? What if I would have done that? You don't want to live with any regrets, Kev. Go to L.A. Be great. Now, there's going to be tough times. Everything that glitters isn't gold. But at least you can say you experienced it. Because if you look at your friends in the mindsets that they're in, not saying that they're bad, but it's going to be tough to find your way out here. There's a lot of nonsense going on, man. Being in a fresh new environment, meeting new people might actually do some good for you, young man. So I say go to L.A. They're paying for housing. You're getting monthly checks. You're playing video games and you're away from the bullshit. Now, what is she doing, y'all? What is she doing, y'all? Oh, man. What is she doing? She don't even know the rules of the game, y'all. She didn't even know that Dre can be friends with her old ex-lover because she can. That's what lesbians do. It's all right. It's acceptable. It's okay. There's no jealousy here. They're professional. But she just doesn't understand. And that's why she does the infamous when I put my hands up on my hip, when I dip, you dip, we dip. But she ain't dipping today. She ain't dipping today. Kev's about to go ahead and dip out to L.A. She ain't dipping today. She's confused. She's trying to figure it out. She don't know what the fuck that happened. This is a bombshell here. Graduation is only a couple of hours away, and now your son's talking about moving to L.A. Damn. Now, we find out about Papa. Now, previously on the shy, Papa found out that Kenya, 19-year-old, had a kid. Now, I don't know how old this kid is. I thought he was about 13, 14. This little kid was big. Pause. But Papa shows up. She's like, listen, are you good with kids? Excuse me. <laughs> uh, I'm 17. I ain't got no kids. What do you mean am I good with kids? I don't know nothing about kids. She said, well, I know he's my responsibility. I, 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 I couldn't get it out of my mouth fast enough. Pause. Obviously, your kid is your responsibility. It ain't mine. It ain't mine. She talk about. She said, yeah, Papa. I can understand if you want to be with this. Papa sat down and Papa said, nah, man, we're going to figure this out. We good. I said, what? This ain't no, hell no. This ain't what Papa's about to do, man. Papa, you ain't even got to experience the real world, brother. You don't know what to do out here in this world, man. You do not, hey, you do not. 
need to be volunteering to do this. Nah, man, you 17, bro. Don't walk into this. Don't walk into this. If y'all remember back on All American, y'all remember that fool Jordan? He was doing the same silly shit. Don't do this. Don't do this. She asking him, like, this is a minor. This is a minor still. He's 17. Well, I don't know what it is in Chicago. But shit, I always just say 18. What? He's a minor and she knows that. Remember she said she wasn't going to fuck with him until he turned 18. She was just going to... She was gonna spring that baby out once he turned 18. She can give him a little bit of loving. He turned eight. Oh Lord, she was trying to get my nigga papa. She ain't even had to bring him off with nothing. This nigga papa said, Listen, I'll be here. Hey, we want to watch cartoons too. Come share that iPad. What nigga go home? I see what the play is here. This ain't what I came here for. What? They got Papa in here talking about shit. I ain't a stepfather. I'm the father that stepped up. No, nigga, you a kid, man. This kid, this kid right here. Look at this nigga. Papa a senior. This nigga a freshman. This little dude is a freshman. Papa. He old enough to be on the payroll at motherfucking Smokies. You 17 years old, man. Why they got Papa doing this, y'all? We just had the whole situation last season. The whole Jimma and Jake situation. Everybody like, man, they too young. Man, they shouldn't be doing this. But now we just inserting this nigga Papa into being a goddamn stepfather? What the fuck, man? But hear me out. That's just one spectrum. The other side of Mo is saying, well, it is niggas like that out here in real life. There are niggas like Papa. Like, <laughs> it is what it is. So it is realistic. It, this is not fake. This is, there, there's kids out here like this, man. Just scale it back. My bad. My bad. I apologize. There are people like this. I don't have nothing with I don't have nothing wrong with people being step parents. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? As long as you're making sure the kids are good. But dog, Papa's too young for this shit, man. As, as I, I, I that that's where I draw. Like, come on, man. This dude's 17. This this ain't it, it ain't like it's his kid. You know what I'm saying? Him just inserting himself into to being like a, like a stepfather. That that's too far for me, man. That's Nah, man. We got to draw a line somewhere, man. We should have seen it change in, like, Papa's character. Like, he'll be cool with her, but come on, really? Really, man? They got Papa out here. What's up, little man? Man, at least in Baby Boy, remember what Snoop did in Baby Boy? That's what Papa was supposed to do. They're not my dad. He's supposed to kick the iPad out of his hand or something, take the beanbag or something. Come on, Papa. Snoop Dogg wouldn't have had this. They got Papa in here talking about, yeah, we'll make it work. Come on over here. Let's watch cartoons. Share that iPad. Man, Snoop did not care. Snoop said, man, fuck your boy. I said, oh, he talking to a kid like that? He ain't talking to a kid like that. But over here, Papa watching cartoons. That's all folks. Like, damn, what is he watching? <laughs> We're going on a trip on our favorite market ship, zooming through the skies. Little Weinstein Stein. Climb aboard. Get ready to explore. Yeah. Get on the magic school bus. Hey, we used to have some cool ass cartoons. But now they got cartoons. They be having bass in their cartoon. Like, damn, these cartoons is cool. Like that little girl that be doing the little count. Ah, 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 Apple. I like, damn, that shit hard as a motherfucker. I like, damn. Kids should be wanting to learn, man. When we were younger, we didn't want to learn. These kids should be eager to learn. But instead, they can't read. They a little behind. The grading scale has changed. Damn, man, I'm just astonished. Like, 
dog, all I got to do is give 21% effort in school and I can pass? Man, look at this. Just imagine all you had to do is just wake up. D21. Bingo, nigga. I'm graduating. I'm graduating. Damn, man. Boy, I was boy, I was born in the wrong generation, man. I tell you. If I was born 20 years later, oh man, I'm telling y'all one thing. I'd probably be graduating from three colleges. By the time I was 15, boy, if this is the grading scale, I'd be one of the smartest. Ooh, I'll tell you something. Y'all may not believe me now, but one day, if I ever get a hold of a time machine, I'm going to prove y'all wrong. I'm going to prove y'all I am somebody. Might not be nobody now, but in 177 years, when I zoom through time, they're going to be like, damn, that nigga mow with somebody. Just not right now. <laughs> Yep. Well, they they just see even the Kima said uh, they they inserted him. They, when I seen this, I thought Papa was gonna walk out the room. Like, nah, I can't do this. You know, I, I like you. We can still be cool and hang out, but I don't want to do this. But they, man, and on top of that, bro, let's be real. They got Papa doing this because Papa think he going to get some finally. He thinks if he does all of this, he's going to get some. Still ain't got none, and the nigga volunteered to be a stepdad. Oh, that's right. My bad. No disrespect, Papa. He waiting. He's saving it for marriage. My bad. That's me. I apologize. I, I, I can't knock him. He's waiting for marriage, so. No, oh, don't have Papa marry her, man. He's 17. No, no, man. They better not have him turn 18 and then his, his dad is dead. He marries her oh, and brings her into the house so she can have her. Oh, no, don't do this to Papa. No, don't do this to Papa, please. No, but hey, they can't do that to Papa, y'all. That better not be Papa's storyline. He turns 18 and moves her and the kid. And no, 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 no. That can't be Papa's storyline. Don't do Papa like this, man. Papa got a cool little job. He about to be manager. He might take over the spot, especially if Emmett get knocked or something. Come on, man. Don't do this to Papa. Papa should have some money coming in from the insurance for Pops. Don't do this to Papa, man. That ain't right. Because now we're going to look in that yearbook and always remember him as the most simplest man we've ever seen. R.I.P. to Papa's character. They doing our dog wrong, man. This is too much of a responsibility, man. I was 19 and I was messing with a 31-year-old. Her oldest daughter was 13, bro. Like, I, 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 I don't... I, I shouldn't have been over there, man. You know what I mean? Like, the kids had to do homework, and I was helping the kids with homework, bro. I was 19. I was only, like, six years older than her oldest daughter, bro. I should have been over there, man. It was cool, but, you know, I shouldn't have been over there. I mean, I like a, I could have been, like, their brother. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> could have been their brother, but I come over there, they would call me Mr. Mo. Well, Mr. Julius at the time, but. I'm like, man, they ain't got to call me Mr. Julius. I'm only like six years older than them. Like, I'm a fucking sibling. Like, I'm playing the PlayStation 4 with them or the PlayStation 2 with them. You know what I mean? Like, I'm chilling. I'm a kid, too. But it is what it is. Hey, anyway, I was over there, because shit. We had, you know, hey, we had connected one night. We went out. This is a, believe it or not, there's black people in Billings, Montana. So I worked up in Billings, Montana. So I was 19. And I went out one night like, shit, I wasn't about to be in the hotel on the weekends because we off on the weekend. So I went out and I met this lady. She was 31. Cool people, though. Cool people. Though. Look good, too. Man. I ain't going to lie to you. But, yeah, I didn't go over there and say, hey, you know what? I'll be these girls' stepfather. Hell no. I was over there chilling. Don't do this to Papa. That was already a lot of response. I, I would go over there. They would ask me, could I help them on homework? I'm like, man, look, 
I can help y'all, but I ain't here for all of that. Y'all need to be doing y'all. I did my homework. Y'all need to do y'all. Y'all not my kids. You see what I'm saying? I'm like, man. No, nah, I didn't lie about my I never lied about my age. Unless I was trying to get in somewhere, but that's a whole different story. But <laughs> we already know about what happened in D.C. I told y'all we came from the strip club. I had that fake ID, but they tried to get your boy, but they didn't. That's when they pulled them guns on us, man. Scary night. But yeah, I wasn't doing this. But he is 17. His mind isn't fully developed yet. He don't know what the hell is going on. He know what's going on, but he don't know what's going on. And that's why his dad was on him about it. He said, what, she got a kid? No, man, no. You ain't got to experience your life. You're still a kid. A kid raising a kid is tough, but especially raising a kid that ain't your kid. So you don't know anything that happened between those first couple years. Like, you're not an adult. You don't understand what's going on, Papa. You ain't got no experience. You talking about you want to watch cartoons. The kid over here talking about, man, I got a motherfucking rash. What? Papa don't know none of this stuff. He don't know this kid's medical condition. He's a kid himself. Papa don't know none of this shit. He don't know where to go. He don't know what to do. Don't do this to Papa, man. Don't do this to Papa. If there's one thing I could put my foot down on is, hey, man, don't do this to Papa, man. Don't. Don't, man. I can go hours and hours and talk about how this is going to affect Papa. We talking about Keisha being traumatized and depressed. She has her right, but Papa's right behind her. If he goes through this, man, for the rest of his life, he's going to be scarred because he ain't checked the group chat. But this is good for Kevin. And this is why Kevin needs to go to L.A. First, you got your dog, Jake, that took your chick behind your back, knocked her down, got her knocked up. Now they together. Then you got Papa making these kind of decisions. Like, dog, no, nah, you need to go to L.A. These will be your friends. Facebook, y'all hit each other up. Every now and then on Instagram, y'all send each other memes. Y'all holler at each other every now and then. You know saying? You might FaceTime. Hey, what you on, bro? Oh, nothing. I'm over here taking care of the little kid, little Kenya Jr. Damn, what Kenya Jr. up to? Oh, he's starting ninth grade. Damn, that motherfucker old as hell, Papa. You the stepdad or the brother, nigga? Which, which one are you? But it is what it is, man. I don't like that they're doing this with Papa's character. But just being honest, there's dudes like this in real life. There's dudes like this in real life. Now, I don't know what... Like, I don't, know, I don't know, man. This this just this seems wrong to me. I don't know. It just seems wrong to me. It's like uh, it, it's it seems like you can call her setting Papa up or like tricking them and trapping them. This dude is 17. She knows he's 17. She said she wasn't going to fuck with him until he turned 18. So she fully aware that this nigga is a minor. But she talking about, are you ready for this? You know what I mean? What? Man, don't do this to Papa, man. This ain't right, bro. Like, all jokes aside, this ain't right. <laughs> hey, man, this, this, this ain't right, man. <laughs> it ain't funny but man this ain't right bro don't do papa's character like this because if we just do the reversal and it was the other way around this nigga papa be going to jail <laughs> they be locking this nigga papa 19 year old ass up if he had a 17 year old talking about come be the stepmom to the kid man don't do this to papa man that ain't right either way Papa over there talking about let's watch the cartoon. Man, I'm going home, man. You stood me up on prom and then I came over here for this. Or is this the same night? Man, I don't even know what the fuck going on no more, man. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Man, it's a crazy day, man. A lot of shit's going on in the shy. And this was one part. I said, wait a minute. Don't do this to Papa, man. Yeah, we get it. Papa, you know, he ain't had the girls. He ain't had the luck with the girls and everything. But don't do this to Papa. Now she got to end when she go to Smokey's. Oh, Papa, I got to leave early because you're junior. 
oh, well, make sure Junior's all right. You can take off. Man, that ain't your Junior, Papa. Quit calling that nigga Junior, man. This is, wait, this is the same night of prom. This can't be the same night of prom. What is this a flashback? Because remember, they took school pictures. Prom was last week. They took school pictures today. So Papa, nah, this ain't this ain't the same night of prom. This nigga came back over here. Unless this is a flashback. But I think Papa just came over here. He heard that she had a kid. The nigga went home and cried. And then he thought about it. Like, man, well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He met the kid on prom. Yeah, yeah. Okay, my bad. Misunderstanding. Maybe I missed something in the chat. But I was kind of disturbed. and said, man, this ain't right for Papa's character, man. Don't do this to Papa. Yeah. Oh, well, they ain't going to listen to me. Who am I? Papa shows up. He got the new timepiece. Always on time. He's supposed to be. Well, he shows up because they got, you know, they got the men get together. You know what I'm saying? The men of the hour. That's what we're going to call that group. Men of the hour. That's what, oh, that's our podcast. Men of the hour. All right. Men of the hour. He said, Papa, why are you late? You deliberately disobeyed me. He said, man, my bad. I was over my girl's house. He said, I told you to stop messing with that girl, man. You don't need to be no father, man. I don't like you doing this, man. What are you doing over there, Papa? And I gave you a watch. How the hell you get carried away with the time? This nigga went over there, was watching cartoons, eating the fruit snacks, and fell asleep on the couch. Had two Capri Suns. I know Papa. He a two Capri Sun type of brother. Hell yeah. Hey, hey, Papa, what you doing in that fridge? Man, I'm just getting a Capri Sun. Man, you already had one, man. I'm going to be good after this. Hell no, Papa. How you lose time? You got the watch on you. Check the time. You smoke crack, don't you? No, Papa don't smoke crack. That's the wrong movie. You can tell time, can't you? He said, oh, well, my bad. And Dad is telling him straight up, man, I don't want you being involved with her. Dog, she has a kid. No knock on, you know what I'm saying, single women with kids. I'm just saying, Papa is a kid. Papa's only 17. He don't need this life. It's not like it's his kid. Now, if it's his kid, yeah, you got to be there. You got to step up. You did this. You got to do what you got to do. But, man, he a kid, man. He's a manager at Smokies, man. She works at Smokies. Neither one of them are financially in the position to raise a kid. She live at home with her mama. Papa at home with his daddy. And his mama that we barely ever see, but we do see. Well, now we see her a lot more. I ain't know that. But, damn. Now we got all these brothers in here, and all these brothers got problems. Everyone got issues. Hey man, I ain't, hey, I ain't no mess. I'm just telling y'all the story, man. I'm just telling y'all the story. I didn't want that to happen to Papa, but it's happening. It's happening. I ain't got no control over it. I wish I did, but I ain't got no control over it, y'all. Papa is on a highway to hell. Everyone in here, they got their problems. Emmett, he's suffering from a concussion. Let's count them out. How many concussions we got in here? Emmett got a concussion. Uh, Papa got a concussion. He didn't went over there. He, he didn't hit his head on something because he over here thinking he stepped at. Kevin and got a concussion. He don't know what the hell going on in the city because his mama wanted to stay. He can't turn up. Trig got a he got a concussion. He don't know if he Trig or if he Victor or if he want to get in the ring and, or if he want to motherfucking go down to the police precinct or go and call the feds himself or. Gonna 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 I'm gonna tell. Shy definitely got a concussion. This nigga didn't put the motherfucking guns in the motherfucking HVAC system like he working for Luther's on set it off. He got a concussion because Bakari talking bad to him every chance he can get. 
Darnell, he the only nigga that ain't got no concussion. He ain't got no concussion. He said, man, Emmett gonna do dumb shit, so I might as well give Emmett this gun, because if Emmett get into some dumb shit, Emmett might need to shoot his way out. But now I'm looking at Emmett dumbass, because he got into some dumb shit, because his ass didn't know how to use a gun. So no, Emmett, you get a concussion for that, because you did exactly what your daddy told you not to do. He said, don't do nothing, nigga. You ain't built like that. I'm not even built like that, Tommy. That ain't even me, yo. Darnell's the only one in the men of the hour that had a motherfucking conscious, not a concussion, a conscious, because he's the only one thinking. He's getting the plays. Everybody talking about, man, Darnell always got that motherfucking earpiece in. I said, that's because Darnell talking to the boo. What we got? What we got? What play going on? What play we going to run? Okay, okay, say what? He, okay, this is what gonna happen. Give Emmett the gun because if not, Emmett gonna go over there and get his ass. Okay, give Emmett the gun. Okay, yeah, man, he keeping the earpiece in. He's hearing the play. Darnell's always one step ahead of us. Remember, Darnell stacked up that bread and bought that house after the wedding. Darnell, we may think that he dumb. He out there getting his money because every penny counts. In order to get to a dollar, you got to start with a penny. So you remember when Shad's ungrateful ass was talking about that hun done? That's it. He said, man, shit. You get 100 now, you get 100 later, you get 100 another time, that's $300. You just got to save that money a little bit. But hey, guess what? We ain't done with the concussion count. Then we got this nigga, he got a concussion because he didn't let his brother, not his brother, but his sister, Lene, hop in the whip with motherfucking Bakari. When everybody in the city know Bakari worked with goddamn Duda, and Bakari had a goddamn Lamborghini. Let your sister get in this car, mister. She's all I got. Nigga, he got a goddamn Lamborghini, nigga. You gonna let this nigga drive your sister in a Lamborghini? First of all, it's a fucking Lamborghini. Second of all, he ain't got no goddamn Lamborghini money. And third of all, he a street, nigga, and you know that. Fourth of all, he worked with Duda, who got each and every one of these niggas in this motherfucking circle scared out their goddamn boots. So you put your sister in that situation, nigga. I don't want to hear you talking to Bakari about what it is to be in the streets, nigga. You didn't stop him. The nigga had a fucking Lamborghini. Nigga, I'm not letting my kids drive no goddamn Lamborghini. I don't care how old they are. You need to be an adult to drive a Lamborghini. The motherfucker's too fast for you. This nigga let his sister go. Now you talking about, man, you need to do the right thing. Nigga, you let him do the wrong thing, nigga. The fuck you talking about? Come around here talking to us like you got some sense because you went to jail, nigga. The fuck you talking about? You got a concussion. Who else got a concussion? You got a concussion, nigga, because Tierra run your goddamn house, man, and do the whoop your ass, nigga. You got a concussion because you showed up to this because your girl used to fuck on Trig. Nigga, you got a concussion. Everybody got a concussion in this motherfucker except for Darnell. The men of the hour have to be the weakest niggas in the city of Chicago. 18 niggas scared of Duda. Lock these niggas up. Get these niggas out of my face, man. These niggas is sorry. All of them. Niggas talking about get my back. Man, fuck you and Smokey's fuck fucking Emmett. These niggas just as weak as they want to be. Darnell got pistol whipped this morning. Bakari got his ass whooped. Man, get these. This nigga got his ass whooped. Get these niggas out of here, man. This has to be the worst group of niggas I've ever seen. These ain't niggas. These are niggas. You ain't niggas. Man, get these niggas out of my face, man. Niggas is weak. Fuck, man. I'm not coming to this motherfucking men in the hour, man. I'm not doing that shit. I'm looking at all you grown ass niggas getting y'all ass whooped. Man, I can't get no advice from y'all. All these niggas got a goddamn con Look at Bakari. Nigga can barely see y'all. Car, you all right? Hell no, nigga. I can't see. Like, god damn, nigga. I'm moving to motherfucking LA if I'm Kevin. Nigga, I don't give a fuck, nigga. I'm on the phone right now, nigga. What's happening, nigga? I told y'all last week I took the job. I graduate tomorrow, nigga. Have the PJ on the tarmac at four. Because, nigga, I'm gone. Nigga, ain't no after party. Ain't no nothing. I'm coming to LA, nigga. The number one draft pick. For the L.A. Gamers, is motherfucking Kevin 
L. Williams. Man, I'm gone, man. This sounds like hell and torture. I'm not sitting around here with you niggas, man. I know Papa like, what? Papa need to be getting some information. We talking about the adults need to put their hands on Papa and teach him. And this nigga ain't listening. His dad just told his ass not to do nothing. But then his dad failed Papa. His dad sent Papa to all of these niggas when Trig ass just came and told you that he's into some bullshit in the streets. All of these niggas in this five block radius are scared of Duda because these niggas ain't shit. Not one of these characters we look at like, yeah, man, it's a cool character. No, Jake, yes. Kevin, kinda, yeah, yes. Papa, hell no. Jake and Kev, the only two. The only two, Jake and Kev. Jake's finding his way now. Jake's finding his way. He got a little business cracking. He ain't into it with nobody. He's good. Papa got his whole situation. Kev, all he got to do is leave the city. Kev leave the city. I'm talking wiping hands clean. But no one is learning anything in, in the pastor sent Papa to this shit. The pastor sent his own son to this, not knowing that each and every one of these brothers are the devil. Oh, I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen anything like this. We gotta count them out. One, two, <laughs> two. No, 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 no. That's starting now. That's starting now. No, 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 no. One, 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 two. <laughs> we already had two. Three. I oh, only had three. <laughs> Emmett, oh, four. <laughs> four ain't shit, niggas. Oh. <laughs> Five. Oh. Five, it hurts. It hurts. Six. Ah. That's seven. Oh, no, that's Jake. That's Jake. We good. We six. Papa, seven. Ah. Uh. Kevin. Kevin, the real one, he can leave. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh. Three out of seven niggas is real niggas. Three out of seven niggas is real niggas. 55% of niggas be holding their weight. The other 45% is fake. Three out of seven niggas is real. So you need to go ahead and look around tomorrow. When you go somewhere, you count out motherfucking. No, 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 no. My bad. I apologize. This is three out of 10. Three out of ten niggas is real niggas. So when you go in a room with ten people, it better be you and two other real niggas in that motherfucker. Because it's telling us right now it's only three out of ten real niggas. Three out of ten. I mean, you go in a room with ten people, seven niggas ain't real in here. And I know I'm one of the real. So there, where's the other two? Where the other two? I did the math wrong. It's three out of ten. Thirty percent of niggas is real. The other 70, I don't know what these nigga doing. What the fuck this nigga doing? This nigga tripping. That nigga must be part of the seven. <laughs> the L7. Oh, that's why they call it an L7. Oh, my God. That's why they call it an L7. They call it an L7 because three niggas is real. Seven niggas is lame. L7. Hey man, I appreciate y'all, each and every one of you. From all my years living, I never knew that three out of 10 were real niggas. And that's where L7 came from, the lame seven, the loser seven. Oh my goodness. Sometimes, sometimes I'm too good at this. 
I don't even be trying sometimes. Sometimes like, damn, Mo, you might be a little smarter than you think you are. I'm like, man, I don't be trying. I was just talking. I ain't even know three out of ten was real niggas. And then L7 meant the lame. Se- oh, my goodness. I always thought L7s were like squares, but no, it's, it was telling us. The mathematical equation tells us that three out of ten niggas is real. The other seven are lame. Oh, my God. Women lie. Men lie. But numbers in Mo don't lie. Numbers in Mo don't lie. Oh, oh my goodness, man. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Sometimes I think I might be one of the best to ever do this. I might be the best to ever do this. When it comes to breaking down the show, man, I ain't gonna lie to you. To just be off the dome and freestyling, sometimes I impress myself. I ain't gonna lie to you. Sometimes I'm like, damn, what did I even say? But damn it, I'm good. Sometimes you got to acknowledge yourself. I might not be the best, but damn it, I'm good. (laughs) All I know is when I lay my head on my pillow at night, I know I gave y'all the best I could. I know I tried to come up with storylines, but damn it, figuring out that three out of ten niggas is real niggas and the other seven are lame, L7. Oh, my goodness. That right there, if I don't win the Nobel Peace Prize for this, if I don't get something out of this, then I don't know, man. Something ain't right, bro. Something ain't right. It's like, that's like the Da Vinci Code. No one ever knew what L7 really meant, like the math behind it. I just showed y'all. Fuck, man. You know what? I changed my mind. There's hope. There's hope this season, baby. There's hope this season. All right. There's hope this season, y'all. We back. Carolina Panthers, baby. Carolina Blue Whip, man. Yes, sir. We back. I got hope. I got faith. I believe. Yes, sir. Y'all think it's a game. Now we back. L7, baby. Three out of ten are real. Get up out this damn meeting. They wasn't talking about nothing. Now, I heard through the grapevine that kid was moving to L.A. And I hope that you told my Isha. Told her to. She said, why am I finding out in the streets, Kevin Kev, that you're supposed to be moving to L.A.? He said, man, I was going to tell you, shouty, but she's getting mad and everybody's mad. And that's one thing I'll always say. Never, never worry about what someone else thinks about your accomplishments. This is a good moment in Kevin's life and everyone is making it about them. Everyone is making it about him. She's talking about. I'm not going to be chasing after you, Kevin. This ain't no rom-com. If you love me, then you will stay. He said, it's not about chasing me. It's, this is something that I want to do, and you can come to L.A. with me. I said, oh, they doing Kevin the same way they doing Papa. You can come to L.A. with me, too. You get more of an opportunity. But didn't Kev say that he's about to be staying in the gaming house? I know for sure they not letting my Isha stay up in that motherfucker. He said, you can come to L.A., too. What he's doing right now, this is a classic move. This is a classic move. Now, it's just part of the game, so do as you please with this information, but I can't give away too much of the game. But what Kevin is doing here is the classic selling a dream. You know what I mean? Selling a dream. Because he said, you should come with me to L.A. He's going to be on the team. So he's going to be in the house, meaning she's going to be in L.A. She got to come up with a way to live, eat, survive. We already know that that's a no-go. Unless something pops off, that's a no-go. Secondly, she's saying, well, if I come out, he said, I could fly you out there. She said, well, if I come, I got to fly first class because I'm worth it. 
This is another dream that is easily sold. This dream here is easily sold because the reason it's selling the dream is because none of this shit's going to happen. She said she wanted a first class flight. A first class flight from Chicago to motherfucking sunny side Los Angeles. How much is a first class flight from Chicago to LAX? Flights from Chicago to Los Angeles leaving October 7th and coming back October 14th start at $878. The shortest flight is about four hours and 20 minutes long. No, we want to know what the first class is. Hey, 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 hey. Stop talking. Let's see. Let's see what the first class flight is. Okay. Non-stop Chicago to LAX. Hmm. Hmm. $1,600? He ain't about to spend no $1,200 for her to buy a first class ticket where he could put her ass on motherfucking Southwest First class in Southwest, well, at midnight, or, no, is it 24 hours? Put her on a Southwest flight, get her on that $49.99 special one way. It might be two stops. Send that motherfucker from Chicago to Dallas, Fort Worth, from Fort Worth to L.A. on that $49.99 special. She better check in on time so she can get that first class seat, number one and be on about her day but i'm not booking no first class flight for you to come and hang out if anything you're gonna get economy i might be able to finagle an extra 15 and get you some leg room in the motherfucking emergency out but nigga you're not getting a first class flight that goes for anybody i'm not even booking the first class flight when i go to germany i'm in the motherfucking first row was row 44, but once you go to the back, you know what I'm saying, to the back of the back, I'm in the first row, so I got leg room and my TV on the wall. I got nap seat. I don't got the first class where you can lay down. No, I'm not spending that much money to get to the same destination. What you just spend to get over here, man? I spent 33 on this first class, but I got to lay down. Then you got to lay down. I got to recline my seat for a fraction of the cost. And I got there the same time as you did because I seen you in immigration. Yeah, man, get the fuck out of here. Just that first class flight. Now, I'm not buying no first class flight. I'm going to sell you this dream and tell you I'll fly you out there and you'll never come on out there. You'll never, ever come out there. Yeah, I'll fly you over there. Man, ain't nobody about to fly you out there. Because that means I fly you out there. I got to get you a room. Hell no, there's a lot of extra money when there's going to be something in the city anyway. You know what I mean? gonna be something in the city where all i gotta do is go get something to eat or something to drink and i can run into something and something can come up you know what i mean i'm about to be at these gaming tournaments i ain't got no time to be flying i gotta craft up my skills e -e -e -e. Bing, bing, bing. yeah i gotta do what i gotta do i gotta do what i gotta do this is classic selling of a dream you know you always say i want my dream home you dream about that shit. You're going to get a home, but it ain't going to be your dream home. You know what I mean? Whenever someone says, oh, this is my dream home, no, it ain't your dream home. Your dream home is a home you ain't got. This is the home you got in reality. Your dream home, now, if you got a house built, that could be your dream home. But if it's in real life and you just randomly come up on the house, that ain't your dream home. Your dream home, no, 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 this is your reality home. So what he's doing is selling a dream. Man, you can go out to L.A. You could be a big-time artist. Like, you could just go out there and just pop off. You could make it out there. He said, you ain't got to be no local rapper. She said, damn, that's a disc. She said, that's a disc. She said, nah, just, you just don't want to be a local rapper. Not here in Chicago. Plus, you ain't rapping drill. Ain't nobody trying to listen to no Maisha. Maisha's beef is with Papa. Man, don't nobody want to hear her dissing Papa. You got an older girl, you think you moved on now. Like, come on, don't nobody want to hear that. Man, Papa out here living his, I'm, well, living that kid's best life because he about to be working his ass off at Smokey's to motherfucking make sure that they all right. But <laughs> and I guess they end up getting it on. I was like, all right. <laughs> Look at Kev getting them some finally. 
So she threw him some of that monk monk. You know what I mean? Some of that little monk monk. You know, little, little chip bunks. Chip Dales. Chip and Dales Rescue Rangers. Chip, 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 chip and Dales. Chip, 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 some of that chip monk. Rescue Rangers. <laughs> now it's graduation time. Everybody showing up. Now, this is a small auditorium. It looked like this school only had about 30 niggas graduating. <laughs> it looked like this school only had about 30 niggas graduating up in this motherfucker. <laughs> then this small ass auditorium. <laughs> this is about as big as Papa's dad's church. They got like four rows of graduates. And then Duda shows up. Duda shows up. And when Duda shows up, it's a good time. And remember last time he showed up in an event, he gave that nigga Emmett a gun just to take the gun from Emmett in this episode. Man, this nigga Duda was on the scene. But now Victor wants to do something. This is what they always teach us growing up. Safety in numbers. All of these dudes, weak as hell on their own. But when you put the L7s together, you put the L7s together, they create a brick. That continuity between all of them L7s, that power, with your powers combined. You know what I'm saying? With your powers combined. I am Captain L7. L7 stood up to Duda. Look Duda in the eye and said, if you got to talk to Bakari, you got to talk to us. We the community have came together. We are the men of this community and we were treated as such. A community, not a dictatorship from you, Duda. Now, Bakari, go sit down. We'll talk to him about this. I said, oh, the L7 is trying to make a change, huh? The L7 is trying to step up and make that change. Make that change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fire, earth, wind, water, heart. With your powers combined, I am the lamest of all. L7. Well, they all stood up to do that. And, hey, this is what it's about right here. This is what it's about, y'all. The community coming together. Just like those fathers that were down in Texas. I thought that was good of them. I, it was during the pandemic, I think. But all of the kids used to be up there fighting. The dads used to come up there and like, hey, man, we're not about to be doing that. That's what's up. That's what they mean. The community. Someone's got to make a change because if not, it's going to be in, in the shits. Now, I will say this. I don't have time to be volunteering to go up there breaking up some teenage niggas fight. Because if one of them little niggas hit me, I'm like, all right, that's it. I quit. I'm done, man. I tried to help. I tried. I'm not, man, I got shit that I could be doing. I could be on YouTube. I could be on my new channel. The Mo, you know, make sure you subscribe to that channel. We're trying to get 200 subscribers. I could be over there. I could be over here. Mo J talking about TV. I ain't got time to be over there. These little niggas, wow, man. And just like I told Papa, man, it ain't your kid, man. It ain't my responsibility. Now, I'll talk to the kids. I'll talk to the youth, and I'll give advice in a controlled environment, but not out there on the terrain, man. It's dangerous out there. One of them little kids come and knock me out or something. Then they record me, man, there's some nigga on YouTube. They knocked out. I'm like, man, I ain't even into none of that. I just came up here to volunteer. They said they want the men in the community to volunteer. I got knocked out on my off day. Imagine me going up there on a Wednesday because I don't do no streaming on Wednesday and getting knocked out. I got to get on here Thursday for the first reaction. Talk about, man, nigga, don't knock me out, man. They're like, damn, oh, you all right? Low key, everybody gonna be laughing like, man, Mo knew damn well he shouldn't have went up there, man. But man, that's just what be going on in my mind. Like, man, if I go up there and volunteer, and these niggas get to fighting and knock me out. What am I gonna? I I can't even do nothing. I can't I can't be the angry old man that get knocked out. They wake me up and now I'm trying to find who did it. You know what I mean? You can't be that person. So you put yourself in that situation. But they stood up to do that. Now I was in the back. I was mopping. I'm like, what the fuck going on up there? Because I seen Duda, I said, damn, this nigga clean as hell to be coming to a graduation. Oh, that's Duda. But y'all know I ain't scared of Duda. So I'm like, oh, that's that nigga Duda, man. What the fuck? So I see him all up there. I'm like, oh, damn, the L7's united. Because remember, <laughs> three out of ten niggas is real. Me, Duda, and then whoever is listening to me right now, y'all make three. 
Y'all make three. They say three out of ten. <laughs> me, Duda, and whoever is listening to me right now, we make the three out of ten. The three real ones. Real ones. You know what I mean? Real ones. Look at Shy. Now Shy want to step up. Man, Shy, if you don't sit your ass down somewhere. This nigga Emmett so scared. Emmett didn't say a word. Y'all remember Emmett got his ass whooped earlier in the episode. Pistol whipped him, put a bullet to his noggin, and told him, you still going to work for me. This nigga Emmett was so scared. He went over there and started hugging and holding Keisha's hand. You see him squeeze Keisha's hand. He's like, nigga, I'm scared as a motherfucker. Scared as hell. Now, I don't really have any more trivia for this. I do have, I, I, I might have one. But I don't think it was a good one. That's why I didn't bring up nothing. But oh, we'll 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 continue. We'll continue. I might have one at the end, Kendall. I got you. Now, Bakari is a disrespectful one. Bakari don't understand that. Hey, listen, dog. If you don't want to work for Duda no more, you got to stop wearing his suits and stuff, man. You can't continue to wear his stuff but disobey him. You know what I mean? Like, if you're not going to fuck with Duda, then you got to go back to your right. You can't be walking around in suits and stuff. Now, Pops, he already knows something's going on. And if Duda smirks at you, man, no grown man should be smirking at you. The only time somebody smirks at you is when they chumped you. When they beat you in gambling, when they beat you, like, this nigga. You see what I'm saying? You don't just smirk at another man unless you're about to do something evil. Pause. Damn. Well, this is giving everybody an opportunity. Um, if there's more than one of you listening to it, whoever the second person is listening, Duda just left the auditorium. So it's me, and then I got two open spots for the other two real niggas. I got two spots. Do the left. These two right here, the two moving ones. The two spots left. It's me and the two. Just me and the two. Do the just left. So there's uh, we're taking applications, trying to get that third member. You know what I mean? What up, Michael? Kev gets up, and he get to talking. Kev kind of act like me. I ain't going to lie to you. Kev said, listen up, Central High. Now, we had a school called Central out here. We had Center and we had Central. Central was in the city. Central had some money, though. Central got, like, multiple basketball courts. Like, in their gym, they got, like, eight courts in there. I don't know how Central got that. I've never understood how they had that much money up there to be a school in the city. I always thought that was dope. Man, they got all kinds of activities you can do up there. But neither here or there. He said, Central High, class of 2023. I started tearing up right now, too. I ain't going to lie to you. Because I was just thinking, I was like, damn, man. I've been watching these kids for like the last six, seven years, bro. Now they are graduating. I feel like an unk, man. You know what I mean? He said, listen. As a class speaker and a fan of the Carolina Panthers, times have been hard. There's been a lot of down seasons and years in school. But after all these years, we never gave up. One thing we knew was we'll always be able to fight again the next year. Win or lose, you fight the next year. But we never, ever let anyone deter us of chasing our dreams. And I'm going to L.A. to be a gamer. Do what I want to do and get away from the failures of my peers. No disrespect to y'all. I, Kevin L. Williams. One of the real, but since I'm under the age of 18, can't be the real nigga yet because I'm still a minor. But looking to take that third membership with my brother Modi J. But remember when you listen to me, I will see y'all at the top. And if you don't make it to the top, let me tell you, 50 Cent once said the top feels so much better. Pause. I'm about to go to L.A. and get this money. M-O-N-E-Y. The big bucks. I'm going. First class. 
limousine, riding, uh huh. Ooh, Rolex wearing. Ooh, Kevin don't do that to a Bentley driving. Also, ooh, Kevin winning millions of dollars. Ooh, y'all niggas be safe, okay? It never rains in Southern California. It never rains in Southern California. Yeah, I'm gone. Look, we graduating today. I rock with y'all, but I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Don't do it to him, Kev. That's what I'm saying in the back. I got my mop. I'm talking about don't do it to him, Kev. Don't do it to him. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, Kev. Yeah, I'm like, hell yeah. Don't do it to him, Kev. Kev, get the fuck about the city. Damn. Jake get his diploma. He getting the battle there. He doing a little Sierra one two step. Let me see you one two step now. Rock with, rock with it. Everybody get on the floor. That's the music they should have been playing, but instead they were playing some some trap shit. I guess you can call it drill. I was like, damn, they getting it. But you know what they played at my motherfucking graduation. I got body, body, body. With it by the key, DJ screw by the gallon, bitch, the game belong to me. I got Bobby by the pound. That's what they played at my graduation. I got body, body, body. Class of 2023, throw it up. Damn, boy. It make you feel old, bro. 20 years, y'all. 20 years. Damn. Well, basically, Pops is telling Papa, look, man, if you're going to be messing with that girl living up under my roof, man, don't even come back if you leave. Because he doesn't want his son to be in this situation. He already knows it's a tough responsibility to raise a child as he is. But to be a kid, raising a kid that ain't your kid, to not have any experience and, like, not even start from the beginning, just jumping into the game, man, that's a lot of work, bro. That's a lot of work, especially for Papa's working at Smokey's. He's really not going to get a chance to enjoy anything or, like, find out who he is in life, man. This is kind of a fucked up situation, man. Man, I don't know about that. I, I just feel a certain way about this, man. I don't know, man. I don't think that's right, bro. I don't think they should be showing a character like this, especially a young black man. Like, come on, man. Let this man go out and figure it, like figure life out, bro. That's like my only gripe, man. I like I don't like that they doing Jake like I mean not Jake, but Papa like this, man. Then they got this nigga turning on his dad over a woman. Come on, man. I don't like how they do when Papa like this. That's my only gripe, man. Grown in Chicago. This shirt tight, though. Class of 2023. Can't do it alone. Grown in Chicago. Yeah, this shirt tight. That's the shirt you want to hold on to. You probably buy two of those and only wear one. Keep the other ones. So when you get older, you can look back and reminisce on the good times. Back when life was sweet and easy. Back when you didn't have to worry about nothing but catching the bus on time like Zach from Saved by the Bell. It's all right because I'm saved by the... It's all right because I'm saved by the... It's all right because I'm saved by the bell. Oh, well, time for the party. Fuck all that shit that Mo was talking about. It's the after party. Hey, we officially made it, y'all. We made it, y'all. The last time I remember a graduation party, man, a kid got killed. What movie am I talking about? The last graduation party I remember, a kid got killed. What movie am I talking about? But they ain't here. They got the Rotel dip. They got some cheese, some crackers. This better be Keisha's dip. 
Everybody here, they getting it. Bakari in here, beat up face. Hey, there you go, Nakima. Hell yeah. <laughs> you don't work for Luther. Hey, how much was that check? How much was that check that uh, she got? Does anybody remember the number? How much was that check that she got? Yeah, let me look that up. I got to see. That's now that's valuable information. We need to know. How much did she get for that? She said she had to pay for tuition. <laughs> yeah, Luther was making all kinds of deals up under the table. Luther was robbing niggas. <laughs> you know what I mean? Luther was different. Luther was a cool character, but Luther was different. But everybody out here, they getting it. They jigging. I guess that's what you would call this shit. I don't know, but they getting it for real, for real. Like, hey, hey, hey. I'm like, okay. Pop me in here. He upset because he can't go see Bay. And then out of nowhere, somebody pops back up. We're like, who is, oh, this is motherfucking, uh, Bakari, that's your sister. He said, hell yeah, that's my sister, man. So they around and they kicking it. Nah, Luther wasn't no criminal. Luther was not a criminal, Eric. Luther actually did the right thing. Luther did the right thing. And he ended up dying because criminals killed him. He did the right thing. He was going to turn the money in. Luther found stolen money from the bank. He was going to go turn the money in, but he got killed before he made it to the bank. I mean, to the police station. He got killed. R.I.P. to Luther. But yeah, he wasn't a criminal. He wasn't a bad guy. Luther had Luther cleaning service. What are we talking about? Luther was a legitimate businessman till four fucking thugs came in there and robbed the bank. Luther didn't want no parts of that. Luther didn't want no part of that. Well, sis come in here. She start rapping over that motherfucking day and night. No, this was a kick push. My bad. So he kicks, push, kicks, push, kicks, push, kick, push, coast. And then she started rapping. I said, okay, what we got going on here? I ain't even noticed her jacket said gay. Gay as in happy because I'm happy. Got the bandana on. Whoa, whoa. She getting here. She starts spitting. I'm like, all right, she riding that beat. She doing the thing. I'm like, all right, hey, hey. Move that shit out the way. Hey, hey, move that shit out of the way. I said, damn. And Tierra just told Jimmer earlier in the night, talking about, man, you need to get another artist. Man, you got to start signing artists like this is motherfucking Death Row 95. You know what I mean? Start putting niggas on these motherfucking long ass contracts they can't get up out of, man. I'm talking about knock them up over the head, an eight album deal, nigga. I'm talking about make them recoup so much money they ain't never going to get out of debt. You know, it is what it is, but God damn it, you got to start making some money or you got to go off to college. So she up here, she rapping. I'm talking about she getting it. I said, damn, she's bending over here. Everybody, they feeling it too. Jim was like, damn, okay, cash cow, what's up? Ching, ching. Then we got this old motherfucker over here. Hey, man. What you mad because you pushed down for he sell weight? What you mad because you pushed down for he sell weight? I told y'all, ain't nobody trying to listen to that. Oh, you dating the older girl. You moving on, my Isha rap. Hell no. Nah, we want to hear what the streets got. We want to hear the streets need a body. My Isha hating, hating. Hating on Kev going to L.A. Now she hating on the new thing on the block. Goddamn, my Isha, that hate must run in the blood. Because, woo we I ain't never seen no one blood boil like yours. Hate her. You even this papa, your number one fan. You let this fame go to your head. Now you out here hating because someone in here freestyling. We know Maisha could rap for two whole seasons. Maisha made one song and we ain't heard another one. This girl came in here and just freestyled a whole fucking song in front of the crowd. And the crowd is rocking. It even had me over here toe tapping and slapping my knee like, damn, this girl's spitting. Maisha, we ain't trying to hear that shit. 
We ain't trying to hear none of that. We want to hear the real. The R-E-A-L. Three out of ten niggas is real. Your bars ain't real. Your bars fall into the L7 category. We don't want to hear that shit. There's three real niggas on the premises. Mo is one of them. Y'all figure out who the other two are. But Maisha ain't in there because she hating for no reason. Why you hating? Because she ain't here spitting hot fire and you ain't got a song. You can't even freestyle. You had to open up for a show and only had one song that was two minutes and tried to negotiate a 15 minute set. Hell no. Why you in here hating? What you mad? Because you pushed down for he sell weight. Because you pushing dimes, she up here selling weight. She giving us the whole chicken, the whole brick, the whole bird. What happened to that girl? Maisha ain't dropped a song in 18 episodes. Maisha thinking she big time. Maisha ain't did shit. Maisha ain't got no mixtape. She ain't got no flyers. She ain't got no motherfucking Instagram. She did an interview a couple of seasons ago or a couple of episodes ago. We ain't heard no follow-ups. She just let the talent just... Drop out of her hands. What's going on? You can't hold water. You can't hold water. What are you doing? You got to get a bag. And what I mean by getting a bag is get your ass on the road and do some shows. Come up with some more songs. But you ain't doing shit. You in here hating. What you mad because you pushed down for he said wait. What the hell is going on, Maisha? Get up on your grizzly. You getting opportunities. Jim was doing her job. Jimma made sure that the motherfucking Skittles was in that goddamn place. The motherfucking Sour Patch was in that motherfucker. We had Simply Lemonade in that bit. We had everything we wanted because Jimma was doing the job. Now, you talked all that shit talking about next time, Jimma, let's discuss this before we handle business. Well, there ain't going to be no more discussing because you about to become an employee of the motherfucking Jimma factory. We about to get every artist out of the city of Chicago and we about to put together a goddamn label. And Maisha, you can either get with it or get lost because we ain't playing around with this bullshit one song thinking you hot shit because you had an interview on Papa's pool pit because you had an interview and this Papa and told Papa you too big of a star to be around him you don't want this nigga coming up there because he tried to plug papa pool pit one time but y'all supposed to be a power couple now you hating on your new dude kev because kev got a fucking job and a, a dream to go to la now you hating on the new rapper on the scene look we gave you opportunities maisha we're done we're not cutting any more slack we about to give you the same pressure we give to every character maisha get up off your ass and get on your grizzly because right now it ain't looking good for you i don't care what nobody say i'm just trying to push you to the next level and if i can't do it Jimma can't do it kev can't do it no one can do it for you get up off your ass we better hear a new song next episode man a new song we don't want to see you at the funeral you need to be in the lab getting to working you diss this nigga papa that means you dissed his dad that means we don't want to see you at the funeral you fucked his best friend we don't want to see you at the funeral you need to get in the studio and come up with a song. That's what we want to see from Maisha. Maisha better not be at that motherfucking funeral, man. You better be in the lab, man, or Gemma's going to replace you quickly. Gemma's over here working. She's in the party networking. You in here hating. Fucking mugging her. You don't even know who this is. Obviously, she's spitting them real bars. You don't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with her. She just freestyled on your ass. What you going to do? She could drop the mic right now, Maisha. You can't do shit because you ain't got no bars. We ain't trying to hear that bubblegum bullshit. We want to hear the bars. The B, the A, the R, the S, the bars. Right now, Maisha, you losing. She up there. She got the crowd rocking. I said, who is this? Is this the brat? No, nah, this ain't the brat. She don't rep the S-O-S-O-D-E-F-M-O-B. She don't represent them. No. This is the new girl on the block. And Jenny told us, don't be fooled by the rocks that I got. I'm just, I'm just Jenny from the block. Listen, you better get up off your ass, Maisha. Everybody ain't about to be handing you shit. Gemma, what did she do? She got up off her ass. Her daddy said, you're going to go to college or you're going to make some shit shake. What did she do? She said, fuck that. I'm about to sign me an artist, nigga. Fuck all this bullshit. Maisha talking about, hmm, it ain't that hard. Kev over here like, nigga, please. This nigga Kev like, damn, this bit hard in the motherfucker. This motherfucker, ooh, shit. I might well have her rap my intro on my YouTube channel. This nigga Kev said, ooh. Ooh, this your sister McCart. This bit bad. No disrespect. No disrespect. This bit bad. Ooh, ooh. I said, damn. 
Maisha better get up off her ass. Look at Maisha back there. You know she hating. Look, look, she's still hating. How you drinking a Sprite and hating? Sprite, you drink a Sprite, you obey your thirst. Sprite, you ain't never seen a nigga get mad in a Sprite commercial. Sprite commercial, niggas is always, yeah, they happy as a motherfucker. They hooping. Niggas will be dehydrated. Nigga go grab a goddamn Sprite, go out there and dunk on a nigga in the commercial. Nigga be at the house. They got to do their chores. They drink a Sprite. They cleaning up the house fast as a motherfucker. We ain't never seen nobody hating in no damn Sprite commercial. And if somebody was hating in the Sprite commercial, you give them a Sprite, they cheer up. Not Maisha, though. Maisha's a different type of hater. When you get to hating at this level, oh, it ain't no turning back. It ain't no turning back. This person right here, you want to avoid at all costs. They feel entitled to shit. No, 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 no. I ain't never seen someone drink a Sprite and be mad. Seriously, have you ever seen someone drink a Sprite and be mad? Just think back. I've seen niggas drink beers. I've seen niggas drink Cokes, Pepsi. I ain't never seen a nigga drink a Sprite and get mad. Kids drink Sprite. They play around all day. They go drink that Sprite. They back to playing. When have you ever seen anyone drink a Sprite and hate? I ain't never seen that shit. You don't. You don't. You don't drink a Sprite and hate. Obey your thirst. Sprite, all right? What are we talking about? Sprite is the cool drink. Obey your thirst. Sprite, all right? What are we talking about? <laughs> She's a lost soul, y'all. We lost Maisha's character. She ain't put out no mixtapes. Maisha ain't did a goddamn thing. Maisha ain't did a goddamn thing. Oh, man. Eric said it was watered down. Well, that wasn't no Sprite. That was just a Sprite. <laughs> that wasn't a Sprite. That was just a Sprite. It's a Sprite. Yeah, you see, when you drinking a Sprite, it says it in the word, right, R-I-T-E. Sprite. Right. If it's watered down, that ain't no Sprite. That's just a Sprite. You know what I'm saying? Like a Brussels Sprite. It's just a Sprite. You don't want that. You don't want that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Damn. Maisha's hating. I ain't even noticed that. Damn, that's a, hey, that's a new emotion right there. That's a new emotion unlocked on my channel, y'all. We just got a new body language. Anyone that can drink a Sprite and hate, that's a whole nother level of hating. That's like elite hating right there. Because we'll never see this again. This is going to be a rare moment in TV history. This is a rare moment in TV history. I'm going to have to go back and verify if this is a Sprite or it might be a Canadian dry. If it's a Canadian dry and you hating, hey, you are the devil. If it's a Canadian dry and you hating, you are the devil. Who drinking ginger ale in hating? If this is a mother... Oh, Lord. If this is a motherfucking Canadian dry, I'm done. Canadian dry. You only... Only two people drink Canadian dry. A sick nigga and an old nigga. There's only, there's only two niggas authorized. They won't even let you buy Canadian Dry unless you verify that there's a sick person at the house or an old nigga at the house. That's the only time you authorize to drink Canadian Dry. Niggas is not going to... The, let me pop one of these Canadian Dries open. No. No. If you are hating and drinking a Canadian Dry, you are the devil. Because that Canadian Dry is a healthy instrument there. That is a healthy instrument there. You don't play around with that. You don't hate with the Canadian dry. Like, like that's unspeakable. That right there is another level. Exactly. There's no way you can, like, Sprite, all right, maybe you get aggressive on Sprite, but you ain't hating no Sprite. But ginger ale, you can't do anything with a Canadian dry but just chill and relax. Because you probably don't have the energy. See, Kendall? Yeah, sick. Like, you got an upset stomach? Yeah. That, that's medical right there. That's yummy, yummy, yummy. I got turkey in my tummy. You know what I mean? That's that. But, yeah, man. They, they hate doing the Canadian dry. That's another level. 
We'll never see a hating and sprite again, though. This is rare right here. Matter of fact, I'm gonna look up some commercials. If I find a commercial, join the Discord. We have the link. Uh, Kendall, can you put a new link in the chat for the Discord? If I find a Sprite commercial where somebody was in there upset or uh, hating after they drank a Sprite, yeah, we might be on to something. We might be on to something. But you see young uh, Gemma. She comes over high ladder. And it looks like this lady is hitting on Gemma. Now, I don't know how old she is, but her and Bakari, I think she's older than Bakari. So she's probably mid-20s. Probably like 20. Well, I won't say mid-20s, but like early 20s. So she's probably around. How old y'all think she is? Gemma and them, let's just say Gemma and them 18. What, like 20, 21? Anyway, Jim was talking about, I'm trying to get you signed. I'm trying to get you a deal. You need management. She said, are you trying to offer me something? I said, what's going on here? What's going on here? Is she trying to get at Jim? But Jim is young, ain't she? Or is Jim already 18? I don't know what's going on, but she had the gay jacket on. I said, oh, she trying to get Jim then. Well, if this pushes Maisha to L.A., then Gemma got some more artists because they the more artists. It's just like the lottery. The most numbers you play, the better chance you got to win it. But shit, it's all a gamble. And then R.I.P. to Pops, man. Somebody that snuck in the house. 8.15 at night, too. So we know what time it happened. 8.15 at night, y'all. Oh, no, 9.15, my bad. Yeah, about 9.15 p.m., they got rid of Pops. Damn, choked him out. And the last thing we see is the good scripture. And with the Lord and a good woman, a man shall find his way. Now, I ain't going to lie to you. I'm ready to get my studio set up because, man, my arm be tired as a motherfucker when we get done with this holding this mic. This mic ain't no joke, man. This little motherfucker got some weight, man. My goddamn elbow be locking up. Boy, I can't wait. But that's the shy episode six, man. We made it through. We made it through, y'all. I gave the episode six. We had a lot of niggas that were weak. We've seen a lot of niggas get their ass whooped this episode. We've seen a death. We've seen a lot of niggas faking, a.k.a. Victor. Everybody said they're going to do something, but don't nobody do nothing. Kendall just put the link in the chat for the Discord. Go ahead and hit that link. Join up. You know what I'm saying? Hey, one thing I can guarantee you is Kendall's going to give you a good morning every morning. So everybody say thank you, Kendall. You know what I'm saying? She keeps us on our toes. She's like the administrative um, executive director for us. You know what I mean? Kendall keeps me on track. If you ever want me to read out a comment or something that I may have passed, Kendall will tell me to go back up there and search for it. So, yeah, man, shout out to Kendall, man. She does a hell of a job. I joke around with Kendall, but that's my girl, man. But that's episode six of The Shy, man, and these niggas is weak as a motherfucker, man. They got Papa out here. That, that, that just hurt, man. I, I seen, I said, wait a minute. Why Papa got to be like this? Why Papa got to be like this? But, no, well, we'll see. Pops died. Maisha better be in the studio next week because if she's in the motherfucking funeral, she ain't serious about this craft, man. And I'm going to go ahead and talk to Gemma and, and tell her to go ahead and drop her. Give her her rights back to her music. Because we ain't streaming nothing. Ain't no one. I haven't seen anyone join the chat and put a Maisha lyric in the chat. The only lyric we know is she said she ain't fucking with a nigga named Papa in the pool pit. You know what I mean? We just The only thing we know about her song was she dissed Papa. That's the only thing I remember from Maisha's song. Well, I'm old IJ. Tomorrow is Monday. It's my nephew's birthday, too. It'll be four years old. 
What do four year olds want? Like, what do four year olds play with? Cause they ain't got no video game system over there. My sister ain't letting them get on no video games. They might play like when they come over here, but they don't. Get, my sister don't let them be on no video games. I don't know what a four year old want. I was gonna. I don't know what I was gonna buy the kid. I might get him a book. <laughs> I know you're gonna be mad as hell. I get him a book. Uncle Juju, what up, man? What'd you give me for my birthday, man? I got you a book. Read a book, man. Sit down, read a book. You need to calm down for a little bit. I got you a book in the ginger ale. Motherfucking Canadian drying a book is what I'm going to give my nephew. Nah, he don't eat hot Cheetos. Every time he eat a hot Cheeto, he talk, hot, hot. I'm like, hey, man, you know it's hot. Stop eating them then. Hot, 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 hot. I'm like, hey, man, hey, go to the bathroom. Go wash your hands off it. How are they hot? And you only ate one, but your hands look like you didn't ate a whole bag of man. Quit playing in that bag of chips, man. That's how my nephew is. I'm like, hey, 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 get out of that bag. Look at my hand. Look. Like, hey, nigga, I was gonna eat them Cheetos. Not now, man. God. Can I have these? Man, you are already eating them. Face all junky. Like, man, get, 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 get sit down somewhere, man. Don't touch nothing. He all on the walls. Like, man. Get this dude out of here. He about to be four, though. So hopefully he matures tomorrow. When he wake up, he should be a mature four-year-old. He should be a mature four-year-old tomorrow when he wake up. He should be respecting me. He should be respecting me tomorrow. He's four years old. He's going to have to start calling me Uncle Uncle Mo or something. He gonna, hey, he can't just be calling me Juju. You got. He should be mature tomorrow. Because I used to call my uncle's uncles. I still call my uncle's uncle. He can't just be... Nah, he can call me Juju. I don't care. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know when I'm going to get that kid tomorrow. Uh, I'm trying to find it, Kendall. Oh. Cherry in the chat has a theory that Bakari's sister unalive Pastor Stanley. Huh, let's let's see. It is kind of a short person. Uh, I didn't even think of that. She did just pop up, though. So are you saying that? Oh, she pops back up in town. He tells her, oh, okay. Thanks, Sherry. There we go. This is Sherry's theory. And it makes sense, too. It makes sense, too. Remember, the sister said she had to ask around, and they said that he was staying here. Who could she ask around to know where Bakari is staying? Because Bakari was couch surfing. The only person that knew where he was staying was Duda. So if Duda sends her, he knows, like, she could get in the house. Oh. Mm. That would be interesting if it is her, because she just randomly popped back up. And we know on my channel... We never trust anybody. Everybody's a suspect until we remove them. Hmm, that could be an interesting theory there. I haven't watched the trailer yet for the next episode, but that could be a good one because let's look. They're not that tall because they're about the same height as uh, as Pop sitting down. So this puts them around about five, 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 six, because look, there go the refrigerator door. Look, the refrigerator door, the top of the handle is right here. The top of the handle ain't never no six foot high. So, yeah, this person's about 5'5". Five, five. Here go the doorway. They're only up to about this height right here. These doors are seven foot doors. Oh, yes, yeah, so it's about five. Yeah, it could be her. It could be her. Now, that is a good theory, though. Damn, okay. I like how y'all peeping things out. I ain't even think of it. I just like, damn, they didn't kill this nigga. But then it had me wondering, who sits in the kitchen with dim lights like, and writes in the, in the journal? What, what is he doing here? You come down to the kitchen? Yeah, I probably, I'm a, I'm, I'll probably get him something, but if I get him something, I gotta get my niece something too, man. I don't, like, whenever me and my brother grew up, if you got us a gift, it had to be a gift that me and my brother could use. 
it couldn't just we couldn't just get a solo toy. So we got like a lot of board games and stuff like that. Or like if you bought me a Batman, my mom would like bash the Batman, you know what I'm saying? Get one. Every now and then you'll get your own little toy, but for the most part, we always had to get gifts that we could both use. So if it's like a car set, we could split the cars. Cause my mom never wanted us to be basically be separate. You know what I mean? Like always share with your brother. So so I want to get them something too, but they ain't going to get nothing as nice as him. I think I got about a hundred dollars I can spend for him, but that's a lot for a damn kid birthday though. For a four year old, man, I ain't going to lie to you. A hundred dollars sounds like a lot of money for a four year old, unless I'm taking them somewhere and we ain't going nowhere. And me and him one-on-one, all oh, hell no. Cause he'll listen. But after a while, man, he don't do no listening. Little nigga just be running off like, hey, bro, come on, man. Come here. Now I got to hold his hand the whole time. We'll just be chilling. He getting up. Hey, what are you doing over there? Give me, get back and sit on this couch near me, man. Can't be playing in the other room. I got to be able to see you, man. No, he'll not sit down, man. Take this controller and play on that TV. There ain't no game on over there, but just play on that TV. Nah, that's what I'm saying, man. A hundred dollars for a four year, that's too much money. I do a hundred for all three of them, but sh- shit, for my birthday, I ain't even buy me nothing for a hundred dollars, man. What we talking about? <laughs> Matter of fact, I think I had to pay for me to go out and eat on my birthday. Oh no, we had uh they brought some cake over and we got on the grill. Hell, I bought the food for the grill. Damn. Yeah, I got twenty dollars for him. I got twenty dollars for him, <laughs> but hey, man, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. This is the shy episode six, man. I give it like a six. I don't know where they're going with it. It's just I don't know, man. It, it feels like it's dragging on to me personally. The acting is good though. Nah, if I get him a cut, he already got crowns and stuff. So my mom, I told y'all, my mom retired from Hallmark, and Hallmark owns Crayola. So my mom used to always get them like uh, every year. They get the basket, the basket of like. You'll get two big ass coloring books, crowns, markers. So they got all of that stuff. They just got some this year before my mom retired. Yeah. So all that Crayola, like when it comes to, to cards and stuff, like holiday cards, like I said, well, now I can sign any card, y'all. It's official. I can sign any card and I accept any holiday card. Up until March of this year, if it wasn't Hallmark, I wasn't accepting. And the reason was my mom worked at Hallmark. So as long as it's a Hallmark card, that means my mama in business. My mama's got a job. So if it wasn't a Hallmark, then I couldn't. American greetings. uh, Thanks for the gesture, but I can't do that. That's like me. That's like me fucking with the the, the ops. You know what I'm saying? We Hallmark over here. I had to. You know what I mean? I had to do it. I had to do it for the gang. You know what I mean? Crayola over here. I had to. I mean, you can get the mahogany cards that's owned by Hallmark, but all that other stuff, I couldn't do that. I couldn't. I'm sorry, but now I can, y'all. And I and I take them. I take them. I take them. Hey, you got a card? I'll take a card. I'll take a card. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Uh, better made. I do got to get a bike for them over at my dad's spot. I did say I was going to buy a bike for them to put over my dad because he got this bike, but man, the chain be coming off of there. You got to always fix it. And I'm like, man, just buy a new bike, bro. Spiny bike. But yeah, I'm about to go ahead and get out of here, man. My name is Modi J. This is episode six of the shy. Then we did three and a half hours. I get an episode of six, man. I really don't know where they're going with it. But subscribe to my channel. Hit the Discord. Subscribe to my new channel. I'm trying to get 200 followers over there. We're gonna be going live. Oh yeah. Uh Danello, the prisoner that escaped. They still looking for him. I might talk about that tomorrow morning. I don't know. We'll find out. But I'm Mode IJ, man. I appreciate y'all. We on that road to 50,000 subscribers. Man, it's a slow journey, but hell, it's worth it. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. And remember, tomorrow's Monday. Don't work too hard. You got to stretch to get ready for the week. You know what I'm saying? You don't just go in there full sprint. Nah, Monday, Tuesday, you warming up, getting prepared. Wednesday, you knock out all your work. Thursday and Friday, coast off into the weekend. But, man, if you don't remember anything or take anything from my channel, just remember one thing. You can run. But you can't hide. I'm Modi J, and I'm out.